Oh no, no. Have I you seen what's really next after not. this, Carl? Psychological profile, what's under that? Oh and no! It's like, no. <laughs> Did you not download Just... the previous one? No, we are. Like, this is telling us what we're importing. Oh, okay. Uh, is it Siva? Is it? Hello? Thank you for joining. Thank you for chatting. Um, yeah, I think Carl's just cutting in the, through Discord and stuff. Well, he's trying to download like 500 gig. Yeah, yeah Carl's trying just... to download 500 gig. Coming in a bit choppy through Discord, I think. I'll turn off my PlayStation. <laughs> yeah, I'll like, stop downloading that. But, um... Yeah, it, um, it deletes and downloads the entire game. So you've got to have at least that. But I'll get yeah. that. So we've got Psychological Profile. Psychological Profile, we are mainly Renegade. <clears throat> so last time we, we clogged in more Renegade than not, which makes sense, but we did do some Paragon things. Uh, we're an engineer. We had a big discussion about it. Yeah, we did, yeah. Um, Erdnot Rex was terminated by Ashley Williams during the mission on Vermeer. <laughs> God damn it. Look at Ashley. She's... <laughs> Ashley's so happy about that. <laughs> and then... You know what? Ashley got blown the fuck up. Ashley was killed oh, on her. She, <laughs> she paid for her action. Go the status of Rex. Yeah, it's the same. Oh, it's the same picture. <laughs> she Just, has no reaction. Yeah. Uh, we'll get into that in a moment. Um, the changes and stuff. The council was lost during the attack on the Citadel. And then all of a sudden, the council were like, or the, the human race were like, yes, we should take over the council, and humanity the is the single, only option. It's like, oh, single most hated uh, aspect of this entire story. Mm -hmm. Look at look at that. Captain, he wants none of it. <laughs> he, David doesn't want none. Like, even he knows he's wrong. Oh, uh, so um, this game is a bit more action heavy um, and a bit less RPG ish. Um, yeah. like there's less nuance in okay. your like character creation settings and like changing like you know all your um your armor setting like you know you can't customize your armor and your weapons as much yeah. and stuff they wanted a more streamlined experience but it does mean right. that we get like a dozen crew members most of which are fantastic and memorable Uncover the truth because like the experience is more streamlined it means you get you get more for your Bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. And something they really doubled down on is they wanted to, the, your crew to feel like your crew. So they added like six new members of the crew who have different personalities. So you can kind of create the squad you want. Mm -hmm. Look at this one. Look at this. Look at that way she's walking. And the game, like presentation wise and graphics wise, was like greatly improved from one. It went way well, for a way more, more like cinematic aspect. But just look at like the camera angles on display and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the legendary edition has apparently She's removed a lot of the weird, creepy butt shots on Miranda specifically. It was mostly so on Miranda, funny. but it was the female characters in general. There's a lot of Ashley as well, but no one watches like no one sees Ashley in the game anyway. So <laughs> not in this game, they don't. Fuck Ashley. This text is very fast. Did you like Star Wars? Yeah. Star Wars was a fuck really Star boring Wars, really version of the, the crawl. Like, fuck Star Wars for establishing that you can just have text to explain oh, away key story. Emperor element. Palpatine has somehow returned. <laughs> oh, so I watched I watched that Fortnite thing. Do you know what my favourite bit is? People criticise The Last Jedi for being bad, and it's like, look at fucking that one. Yeah. But they took, like, they revealed a key plot point in Fortnite. <laughs> Disengaging FTL drive. Like, also, look at all this game. J.J. Abrams lens flare going on nowadays. I, I can't hear the um, the game, by the way. Four days searching up um, the and we haven't found any sign of not sure if that's something you can fix, but I've played the game enough to know. I'm not sure it is something I can fix. Something happened to him. Yeah, no worries then. Like, so, so, we had enough technical issues like in the first playing, so I'll just watch it. Yeah, I've just tried to change something and it's got rid of the sound for me. Hopefully yeah, do people that, can then. still I'll hear it. If the sound is gone, it's coming back. Cruiser is changing course. Don't now worry. Intercept trajectory. Yeah, you can. You can already see. Let's look at like the budget. Mm -hmm. no look at this. This like cool green shot. 
Oh, it's like translucent light. That's like pretty basic today, but that translucent looking through the light thing was pretty, pretty difficult to do back in the day. Yes, then, yeah. As you said, sure. the JJ Abrams lens flare. <laughs> yes, and that's the thing is like movie came out on the made. I don't think like many of the JJ Abrams movies are out yet, but like maybe it was close enough. But like obviously this is the the remaster, the legendary edition. It like does look a little bit nicer than the 360 version, but this is still like. Just a, a slightly nicer version of what the um, the 360 looked like. Yeah, my, my favourite bit about watching this is mm. this is just a really like you know high um, concept version of um, uh, what they do in Saints Row. Right. Yeah. Every new, every new Saints Row game has your character to get fucking wrecks as an excuse to change what they look like. Because mm -hmm. notice that we didn't actually see our character the model there, the like. The, the helmet the immediately the covered it up, and it's like, yeah. it's so that when it make it will make sense in a minute when like you get to remodel your character. Yeah, so like you can see that you're playing as Femshek. You've got and they've got like, obviously the female silhouette and the haircut. You don't see the face because you're about to get all have a fucked. Oh no! And um, but the fire should hit you in the face just on its own, just only the face. Obviously, remember as well, just like. We have got our, our viewer rewards for Paragon and Renegade mode, depending on how chat want to persuade things. We are, you know, we have been playing mostly Renegade, but like, a Renegade with empathy. Oh god, like, ugh, speaking of empathy, it's like, oh no, like, just run away from the dead members of your crew. Is that based on how good you were, you should save people. If you play like a renegade shepherd in this moment, you should just fuck it, let everyone die. It's like if you import your character and you were only level 20, like everybody dies, but with us being level 47, yeah. like a few people survive. With the guns you had at the end of Mass Effect 1, you should better lean out your window and shoot them down. <laughs> that pistol you had at the end of the game, or your biotic abilities. Like just the pistol that was just one shotting people, it's like just turn around and shoot down the collector ship. So he was just like one shot in like Geth and uh, super carriers. And this is so rough because like Joker can't really walk. Like he has um like those like really brittle bones, and therefore brittle like bone disease, yeah. he um he, he like he, he can you know he can walk to an extent, but uh, I also just love this moment. Just this was like a show stopping thing back then. Of like, it's, it's one of those oh. things. What a way to start your game. Everything about the previous game. You know the Normandy fucking blew it up. Mm -hmm. Look at it, it's gone. And then not to mention like this shot here as well. It's a really eerie shot of like yeah. you know, dead bodies floating around space. Very cinematic. And um, yeah, poor Joker's just like sitting in here, sealed it off to get some air, and is like, I don't know what to do. Come on, Isn't there a part of like Dead Space Three where you have to walk no, as Joker and he walks really slow? Um, I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was a bit where you play as him. The Normandy's dead, just like us. If we don't get the hell out of here, no, we just have to... I don't have memory of that. But if it does happen, I don't have memory of it. They're coming around for another attack. It's like this is rough though. Oh, just... no. oh, they're charging up another Kamehameha. The thing is, I do, I I get it. They want to re reset the status quo. It's like, you know, the Metroid of just reset, your character mm -hmm. starts with none of their powers, none of their abilities. Isn't this supposed to be the absolute pinnacle of well, Alliance technology? Well, that's kind of the point, though, isn't it? Is like, this is showing off. Like, this is the escalation of look how far ahead the collectors are in terms of tech. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the ship that we don't know who but it belongs to. Sorry, it's hard to not, like, you know, we're, we're doing our best to. To not spoil too much, but apologies about that, but like, you know, we're doing our best, but it's hard to not spoil a game that I've played eight times that came out 10 years ago or yeah. 13 years ago or something. It's a group. That's the beauty of playing through a game like this, of like, obviously, we've now got the benefit of knowing what's going to happen, so we can discuss, like, the nuance of stuff, of, like, mm -hmm. logic of the universe. I feel... Well, like, that, that's you know. it, Carl. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed Mass Effect 2. Um, Shepard is dead. Uh, yeah. Good game, good game. Mass Effect has a very, a very good and well established universe. So when you have things like this, is supposed to be a stealth ship, right? How do they find you? Yeah. 
And I love as well, like, because, you know, obviously Commander Shepard survives, but the fact that, like, oh, we have good technology now, we can rebuild Shepard, as, like, you're shown, like, master achieving through the atmosphere. Has there ever been a hyper moment than that? What Master Chief throwing himself on a mo- planet? Yeah, is that like I think that might be the most annoyed uh, I've uh, been sure. with the cut to black in the game. Let's just like do the quick like interactive comic as well, just to show it off. Because this is this is what PlayStation Three players got got. PlayStation Three Mass Effect Two came out a year late. Mass Effect One was never on the PlayStation. It was exclusive to Xbox. Still, like, so like Mass Effect weird, One, I mean. The one. Yeah. yeah, they released the second one. This is cool though. Um, so this is how PlayStation Three players got to experience Mass Effect One, and like anything but figure everything out. That's how it started. So obviously, I've only ever played the Xbox version. Answering a distress call, and look where that got me. We like, I think, the ma- the, the ending of Halo 2, where it's like, I'm going to give the Covenant their bomb back. Mm. And he just smash cuts to black and says, Master Chief will return. And you're like, fuck it's off. This game yeah. was like four hours long. <laughs> then the ending of ma- and the start of mass- um, Halo 3, you don't give them the bomb back. Mm. You never get to play... Like, that's the thing. Halo 3, I remember when we replayed through it, we realized, man, this fucking video game. Halo 3 was the biggest shit in the world, and it feels like it's half done. Yeah. Ready to take on whatever. Like the amount, like there's almost, there's so much content missing from the game. However, it was also the most content I'd ever seen in a game. Yeah, but that's what's yeah the multiplayer especially. But it's so weird to think of how big Halo Three was on launch, and you didn't even get to play the like giving the bomb back. Mm. Then three quarters of the game is like backtracking. Like Halo Two and Three campaigns. Both just end on a cliffhanger. Whoever attacked them had tried to take it. Lieutenant Alenko made the mistake of getting ah. hit him with some type of energy. Got hit by some sort of bio ray. <laughs> That's when it hit me. Hard. But don't yeah. like how like sexy those geth look. Like how smooth and supple. <laughs> nice sleek geth. Everything went black. Sleek sensual geth. And then I saw something. This is cool. I wish like interactive interactive comics were a thing. Mm. I know a lot of YouTubers do them, and I don't like that they do that. Because obviously they're just taking panels from the comic book and reading over them. Oh so, like, right, okay. Yeah. I wish there was like official versions of those. Like I wish Marvel just did like Secret Wars read by like you know get some voice actors, mm-hmm. and it's just like you know panels from Secret Wars, like you know that basic animation stuff they're doing here, like move pictures across. Just yeah, slide panels in and out, yeah. I've watched that. Because like, there's other YouTubers who make them, but I just feel bad watching them because it's like, well, no one who actually involved with the making of this thing is getting paid for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there was some evidence to suggest that the ship was connected to Saren. But even Udina's that Saren giving you the business. It is, yeah. The council. I am above the law. Oh no. Like who could have thought, like, they needed proof. soldiers with unwavering. Um, like, just judgment and powers above the law. Who would have thought that would have been a bad idea? No, I've never actually thought about that. Until you mention it just then. Of like, that's an a aspect of the game that aged really poorly. Of, mm-hmm. well, basically, like, Saren's just a super cop. Well, the cops are... Like, the fact that no one believes that a cop would abuse their power. Yeah. Even though it's like the most evil shit in the world. <laughs> I, ne- I, I never considered that until you mentioned it just then. And that's that's a really, love about it. Really good point. Like, you know, I hadn't really thought about it much. But like, there's your squad. Just yeah, the fact is like, who would have ever thought you just like got this super soldier and given him like complete, just as I say, powers above the law. Like yeah, we gave a, who would have thought that would have gave corrupted him. Prick. <laughs> we gave a complete prick the ability to break the law, and he broke the law. <laughs> I've not. I've never. That's a really good point. <laughs> I've never considered that. That's why I like replaying stuff like this. It's so interesting. It's like you get to make mention stuff like that. Responsible for cleansing the galaxy of all organic life. Yep. These reapers. I mean, obviously the reapers were also like indoctrinating Saren, and it wasn't just the fact that he was given these abilities and like fucked off. It's like yeah, you also got. Okay, no, the reapers were clever and took one of the the most like. Um, powerful people in the galaxy and used him as like a little 
We couldn't convince the council. A little uh, puppet, basically, to but they agreed maneuver Saren them. Had to be stopped. They stripped him of his specter status. Um, what if season two? Oh, what if specter. season two? My first task. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know anymore with Marvel because I know like they announced a bunch of delays and like the only Marvel thing next year is Deadpool three now. Yeah, which I feel is probably a good idea because Deadpool three is probably going to like set up a bunch of like extra universe stuff. So like, is it? Are we, are we putting on way too much expectations on Deadpool three? That's my worry. I think like, is it going to be another boner joke? Yeah, like Captain America has been rewritten. Blaze being rewritten. Was able to help me decipher some of the yeah, I saw um, that like apparently an aspect of Captain America: Brave New World was like one of the heroes was a member of the IDF, and it's like well, that's that's a topic that's a bit. Not at all oh, you could always just have like the DC moment. universe where one, the, where one of the actors was in the IDF. He's on Twitter posting about how oh they're great. Oh my god, Jesus! We also seen that Stranger Things like the next season might not be coming out. Oh really? Apparently she felt it too. Did you like Noah Shap? But we agreed like that the... get in the way of our mission. Get what character? Will he plays Will? Thanks to Liara's right, yeah, help, we yeah. Our next lead. Yeah, he's he's on like, like just on social media, handing out stickers saying um uh, Hamas is terrorist. Oh, uh, Israeli uh, so like, Palestinians love Hamas. Oh, and Zionism is sexy. Jeez. It's like, I, I know someone who's not going to be in season five of, yeah. of uh, Stranger Things. It's like, oh, you're not a good enough actor, kid. You're too young. Yeah. You're not a good enough actor to start <laughs> talking this much yet. Jesus Christ. Who can get away with being, like, you know, racist or something like that? Or, or just being a complete piece of shit as an actor? Mm -hmm. Mel Gibson. Have a career like Mel Gibson, then you can melt down all you want. And even then, Mel Gibson didn't really get away with it. Only for a couple. He got a couple years off. He's in like yeah. that new season of um, that John Wick TV show, which I'm like, okay, so I'm not watching that. Mm -hmm. And he was in like a bunch of like um, uh, comedy sequels. Do you ever actually looked at what he was he said? Because you're like the, the, always the joke of like Mel Gibson, like a weird racist rant. Uh, well, one one of many met. things, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the things that he said, because I always thought it was a joke someone made, it's like, no, he literally said on camera in front of a police officer, Jews are responsible for all the problems in the world. Just that's like a direct, because I looked it up, so like, what did he actually do? I was curious about it when he was in the Continental, I was like, I know he did something, but what specifically was it? And he's like, oh, he just said that on camera. And then somehow he got back into the movies. I do like that Rex idea. The true. Demogorgon was the true hero. Rex wanted the Genophage Just to trying to take it. out No Shap all along. To help me it, these no, 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 this didn't happen. It didn't happen. Ah, yeah. We saved him. No! The worst thing is as well, it's like, what did Rex really want? It's like, we found out there was a, like, a, a, these people just want to live and ask like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> He got shot down for like, arguing that his people should be able to live. And be able to breathe. And Ashley's like, not on my watch. It spoke to me, threatened me. Honestly, I think like that it would have been bald here. I know you get like the option, and clearly they put that as an option, like there and then, to get revenge on Ashley if she killed Rex if you want to. But like, I think it would have been better if there was just an option to like retaliate there and then and shoot Ashley down for going against your commands. And like, that was like the renegade option is like, no, like you do not disobey your commander. That's the, thing, that's the thing we said, isn't it? You can't trust her. Yeah. She directly disobeyed a direct order from you and shot another member of your team. Mm -hmm. At that point, at the very least, you should have the option to kick right party. At the very least, yeah. But it should be like, you know, ooh, that could be like a neutral option and then the renegade, like the full renegade mode is to kill her. To shoot her back. Actually, the kind of person, yeah, she's the kind of person who tweets out all lives matter and then says that when Black Lives Matter protests are happening in the middle of the street, she'll run them over. Before I could convince him to That's what she is. She's that person. Mm. But look, Shepard, all lives matter. Anyway, I think we should run over protesters who inconvenience me. I wasn't fast enough. I could only save one of them. I would have chosen to save only one of them anyway. <laughs> so Ashley was not getting out there alive. Even though I was fast, 
I don't know if that would just allow me to get to the mess hall quicker to start the memorial. So I'm not dead yet. So don't... <laughs> don't worry, you will be soon. There's a reason we sent you on the suicide the mission part. But you're here over the mic like, I'm not dead. So I'm You're still here now. Ashley died a hero. <laughs> what? Like, that's the thing is, Ashley shouldn't have died a hero. Ashley should have been shot dead for killing Rex. You, know, you should have the ability to call Marshall. Yeah. Well, that would have been a great a scene, actually. Oh, she shoots Rex as a court martial, and you get to decide whether or not you punish her for it. Mm -hmm. And then, then, if she doesn't turn up, then you have to sacrifice someone else for the suicide mission, because she wouldn't have been there. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like, do you want to save Garrus or Caden? And you're like, wait, what? We gave in to each other. I think like Caden's in this game, isn't it? Well, it's just that like, you never play as him because there's like 14 other characters who are way more interesting. I've got a feeling Caden is like MIA in this one though. He's like in the hospital. He comes back though, right? Because I want to remember. I, want, I think Ashley and Caden are the two, and, and Liara are the two relations, the three relationships. It's like technically you pick one or the other that go all the way through all three games. I don't remember them rejoining the crew. They might be a romance option, though. The Protheans had discovered that the Citadel was the key to controlling the mass relays. Like, by sabotaging the Citadel, they found one of those weird things. It's like, I don't remember them being a crew member in this, but they are in this game. I think remember like Ashley, if she survives, she turns up on one of the colony planets and is like, aha, look. Humans are the best, but I hate Cerberus. And, like, oh no, I think she is yeah, Cerberus, like isn't she? We followed him to the Citadel. She she completely goes straight for the human supremacy side. She's fucking all in. Yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, um, it's um yeah because you don't play you don't have Rex. You get Grunt, don't you? The Grunt. Uh, I mean Rex is spoilers, but yeah, yeah. But uh, Rex is on his planet. It's one of those things where they have to account for the fact that this character might not be here, so they don't mm. want to write him into the story because that's too much work. Yeah. You don't want to write an entire story of Rex being here, on the off that, chance that like, the player has been killed. That's the upside and downside to Mass Effect. Is like anyone that can die in game one can't then be like a crew member in two. Anyone that could die in two can't be a crew member in three. And it's, it's like, like so baffling that people got so mad at the ending to three. It's like, mm -hmm. It doesn't take into account like every single change. Like, well, the games never did that. That was never the point. And like, I argue that the game does, like that the trilogy as a whole, they do like react and give canonical endings to like everything you, every decision you make. But it's not all done in one last cut scene in the end of the game. The costs. It's yeah, like it's done across down. the story of Mass Effect 3. It's, it, it's so frustrating. Mm -hmm. that, like, the amount of like vitriol number 3 got. Like, well, number 3 is a very complete full game. It's just right... You've got to, well, it just ends with like, one of three options. It doesn't take out the 8 million things I did. It's like, it does. Throughout the game. It's like th throughout number 3, there's all the side missions and like you know you meet the Rachni again. Mm -hmm people that you saved in Mass Effect 1 come back for a scene and give you help or shit for or yeah. refuse to help you but now you're everyone throughout the game everyone and every decision gets a moment it's not all just crammed into the final cutscene and that's where people it seemingly got frustrated of like well you promised the ending would like give us a conclusion to everything it's like no they promised the game would and the game did like yeah that's it was a bit of a cop out ending but like the rest of the game did give you like solid conclusions to the decisions you made. For me, it's one of those things that it frustrates me so much, especially when it gets like memed to the point that, like, well, the ending was just like three different things. Like, well, did you play the game? Well, no, I, it's. Yeah, yeah, true. It's, it's, it's like the too much water thing in uh, like the IGN review. Mm -hmm. Like, if you actually look at the nuance, like the criticism is valid. It's the opposite of that, I should say. The, if, you look at, if you actually look at it, the criticism is not valid because all the things they say do get addressed in game just another no like I, everything I mean, in that they say no i mean oh, uh, the, criti the mass criticism of the review you mean yeah so like it's the opposite of that ign too much water one way if you look up to it it's like the the criticisms don't make sense mm -hmm. I, I don't know i'm trying to sway which just i, I, I know what you mean because like like the, the argument of like the meme of like 
Well, IGN shit because too much water isn't a reason to give a game like a 7. And it's like, no, but if you read the review, most of the complaints come from like the too many HMs, the fact that the world is covered in water. I mean, you're constantly in wild encounters like basically throughout the entire game means the game is really slow. And it's like all of that can be surmised when they have to summarize it at the end of like a one sentence clip for the review summary it's like too much water is a good summary of those problems yeah and then with mass effects like that summary of like and this is a fixing shepherd of oh the ending only comes out of three things well technically it does but they said yeah the ending isn't the ending the ending's the entire game mm -hmm. they never said that the ending would wrap up the entire so it said the game would mm -hmm. And if you play the entire game, almost every like big decision you can make throughout Mass Effect 1 and 2 does get addressed mm -hmm. and does factor into the overall game. Here it is, the Lazarus go, Project. Do we want to just accept imported face? Like, this is the face we had in Mass Effect 1? We have bigger tits. They go. I do not believe do we can do that. It's only the face we can change. We've got to, we've got to see what you can do with the face. Um. So that's okay. So that's the default. So this is like just what we can, because like the yeah, default the is this one. Yeah. Cause that, and that's then custom appearances. What, in my like, head. Yeah. So that's what Femshep looks like on the cover, right? Hey, and here's the thing: you can really see what they were going for. Look at your imported face, which I think was default from number one. Yes. Uh. Go to your imported one. That's our imported one. That's I what think we, we did just like keep default. No, no, we did. We did Didn't change we? it a little bit. We changed a couple of things like the hair and that. Yeah, I think we only changed the hair, but we kept the facial model basically the same. We changed the hair to give her a sensible ponytail, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And pretty much everything else remained the same. Look at the difference between the two faces, and you can really see what they're going for. Look at the lips, for example, mm. and the, the eye shadow. Yeah. Now go up to your imported one of like the sensible. Mm hmm. You got sensible, well groomed. Still got like the eyeliner, the but it's like it clearly Nothing like different. better done makeup in this. And it's like, yeah, she's got a fuller face with fuller lips and stuff. Like, got a bit more of a it reminds me of like a circular face, a bit of softer features. Yeah, Joe you know reminds me. Of, have you ever seen those memes of like higher fans and they put like the Yassify feature over the oh, women? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that. Like, I think like, that's well. That's a great example of this. Looks like. Just a very ordinary woman who's like being a soldier, um, and even like no the eye makeup is probably a bit much for being a soldier. But like, yeah, it's very stripped down, and then this is like, oh no, she's got like you know the foundation and the blusher and the eyeshadow and the full lips and like the glossy lips looks as like well. A joke. That actually looks like a joke. Like I said, do the the higher fans thing. Mm -hmm. Of like they just give like the female like they give like Lara Croft like um uh, like makeup and stuff like that. Or, like Ashley from Last of Us, they give her makeup and huge tits. Hmm. I didn't realize they did that. A little bit, yeah. And like obviously that's like partly, partly because like we've imported this from Mass Effect One, but partly because we did change her face a little bit. We did, yeah. Well, I think we could change the hair. What new hair have we got? Um. So if we want to do custom appearance. Then, like, maybe we could just cycle through. Like, oh my god, go back to that black lady. I, I can't. Or maybe you we can't because it's cycling that presets, black. isn't it? It's not random. Okay. Go back. That other one. That one that looked like a monster. That one. God. Folks that... at home, if you ever wondered why does diversity matter, do black people look like this? Yeah. Is this what black people look like? No. I mean, but to they be, put it in the game. Because... Like, to be fair, that I don't think many of these presets look like human fucking beings. They do, but that black one is ridiculous. That is a bit extreme, yeah. Who the hell is that? Is that like, like that? Like that is not what a person looks like. I think that's quite similar to what we had, and then we can just change the hair, right? I think that might the be the hair, preset yeah. that we that's picked in Mass Effect One. Uh, so Might let's be. have a look. Maybe we did that, yeah. Maybe we changed the... Maybe we didn't change the face. We just picked a different preset just to mm -hmm. pick one that looks a bit more no-nonsense. But yeah, I, uh, I think as well that that's the perfect the thing of 
and they design character models that'll design the white one and then just make the white one black even though mm. white people and black people tend to have facial like features and just the hair looked real bad as well like obviously this is from like a 360 game being imported but it's like what is that meant to be like what is that hair actually meant to be it's just one block so with a bad a texture video, on it yeah it's like, oh, look at that, you can be Harry Osborne. classic is like, you can have cornrows and that's your option. Yeah, you can have cornrows or an afro. I remember watching um, a video on Kind of Funny by Blessing Audio Jr. And he was talking about, like, black hair in video games and how, like, the default for years so and bad. years has been, like, at most, cornrows and short afro and that's it. And, like, he's like, now we're starting to get to a point where it's a bit more diverse, but, like... For years and years, you can just see the complete lack of care to even like think about black hair, and it's like yeah, that's it's always put in as a side thing. Mm -hmm. so like most like... um, character model, the black people, it's just the white one turned black, mm -hmm. and you can see a lot. Is that a bad thing? It's like well, look at the <laughs> the black skin tones in this game. <laughs> so what are we going um... for then? We're going for like Yassify. Oh, I like that one though. I like the short that one's crop. not bad. I know. I think that's the default, right? That's the one that's on the front cover. No, I think it's like a bit more. Maybe it is then. So I remember that. I remember that being a big um, complaint as well, because um, was it that one. Mass Effect Three was the first game to have. Um, definitely not that one. That's too that one with a tuck. Mm -hmm. So I remember Mass Effect oh, Three is the first. Hair, oh, diamond hair. Why not? We, we have purple, purple hair. hair. Why not? What colours your hair at the moment? Uh, blue and purple. And well, then, many, many roots. Uh, let's go for the brighter purple. Why not? But yeah, it's um, Mass Effect Three. Had the first. It's the first cover that had Fem Shep on, and it was actually reversible. Because a lot of fans are like, yeah. "Well, I play through the game as Fem Shep, and I have Fem Shep on the front." And I remember there being loads of complaints because. Femshep was always default as a redhead. Mm -hmm. it was like if you look, every game is default redhead, but on the front cover of the reversible one, they made a blonde. Yep. And a load of people were like, "Well, she's not blonde." Like, and even though like that's not Femshep. the artwork being displayed in a shop to like sell to people or anything, that's it's, the, like, yeah, it's, it's even the, weirder. Like it's literally not stuff. visible in a shop. If that was the argument of like, well, it was a reversible thing. the blonde woman's going to sell better on the cover. It's like, but that's the reverse side of the reversible cover. And it was only put on because fans were like, well, I want to, I want my character on the front. And the default for Shepard always had red hair. It's like, they I like, like the blue lips, but I, I think like giving Shepard like proper coloured lipstick is a bit much. Yeah. I prefer I think just maybe like... she'd just dye her hair purple. Yeah. She dyed her hair purple, but and like no one's gonna question it. You gonna argue with her? It's like I think like pretty default like makeup in terms of um like blush lip and eyeshadow is like a make that a bit more like reserved. I don't think like our Shepherd would be like I like the yassifying of her, but yeah. Just change the hair. I, I do think that basically. That's... Yeah, why not? She's just feeling you know what, she's feeling fun today. Um that's the question. That's like, actually a pretty... Ooh. If you're going to play Soul, you have to go back and play the ball, dude. <laughs> um, what are you feeling? Well, I'm thinking we should probably stick to like a similar kind of play style. Um, of like... Should we go for this one? Like, uh, Just stick to like the engineer again? And, like Canonically, our character I... can just be the engineer class. What's the Sentinel do again? Because that looks fun. Uh, the Sentinel one... Um, so that's close to what you had to as throw. Well, we were literally an engineer. Because okay, we had like AI like hacking, combat drone. combat drone, overload, incinerate, cryo. Yeah, go for an engineer, why not? What's it? Your party's going to have like every skill taken care of anyway, so... Ooh. Oh, we can only get a flash. Get a flash. That, those are the ones where you do like the loyalty missions and get the power, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah, all good. I've just thought as well of like that would actually be a pretty awesome like short horror story of like a woman wakes up after like you know a car accident or something like that, and she's been given like plastic surgery to look hotter, and she doesn't recognize herself in the mirror. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. 
Like, you know, like a, a partner or a husband or something gets like, oh, a face has been destroyed, give her plastic surgery to look like someone else. Mm -hmm. Like this, look. Damn it, Watson. She's not and then like, it turns out that, like, you know, they engineered the car crash to make it look like somebody else. Oh, God. That'd be a horror movie. Yeah. Here she is. The perfect human. It's not working. You tell this game now. had men work. Oh, come on, shot! I saw it. <laughs> and that's like we're not oh, saying like we don't we don't think she's perfect. It's like part of the story, and we'll get into that. Obviously, she's literally, yeah. The game literally says that she was designed to be perfect for a man. Mm -hmm. And they have like a loyalty mission where she talks about how I don't like how uh, all all men do is stare at me, and it's like all the game does is stare at her ass, which is what makes it so funny. It's just one of those things that really cracks me up of um, uh, the game. She tells you, uh, I think during a loyalty mission, she talks about how, well, I was designed to be the perfect woman, but no one ever treats me with the respect that I deserve because I'm a smart, capable, like, scientist. Mm. And as she's saying it, the camera's flying into a bum hole. <laughs> <laughs> the game doesn't respect her. Yeah. I like this. Just, like, yeah, your scars haven't healed yet. Like, got you've bit. got weird uh, renegade scars on your face. Don't worry about it. Oh, it's like, it makes a lot of here we go, Carl. Like your favourite moment. We've got no thermal clips this? in the pistol. Can I talk about this while you're just doing this? Like, yeah, yeah, go for it. Yeah, we're just doing like a bit of a tutorial section at the moment. So in Mass Effect One, which I contend is one of the strongest like establishments for a sci-fi universe of what, almost any bit of media out there. Like it's better than Star Wars. Don't mm -hmm. have it. Yeah. They established that all the guns in the Mass Effect universe are essentially tiny Mass Effect relays. And Mass Effect relays are things humanity discovers in space that are just essentially rail cannons. That you put like, a ship in it and it just launches it across space like a million miles an hour. And that's how they explain like, the hype of speed travel. Yeah, yeah, the FTL travel. It's like, it's like you can only travel between certain locations because you have to travel from one Mass Effect relay to the other. I talk also, about how um, options. Can I get rid of those like prompts? Oh, still off gate. We might need a couple. There might be a few like weird prompts that you don't know. Well, yet. no, it's like it came up like you've got one out of thirty headshots for the achievement. It's like no. Oh, okay. Um, Damn, shit's off. Do I not have the ability to turn that off? I guess you just got to leave them on there. Well, people, look, bear in mind, this is the era of Chivos where people love their Chivos. Well, damn. Apparently I don't. Got to leave more. Yeah, so that's the Mass Effect Relay. And they say that um, at some point they figured out how to miniaturize this technology. And they put it inside of a gun. And because all the gun does is essentially just make a projectile go to like a quantifiable percentage the speed of light, mm -hmm. you don't need to have a bullet because that would be overkill. Because people, <laughs> as we all know, like force equals mass times acceleration. So the mass doesn't matter if the acceleration is, as I said, a percentage the speed of light. Mm -hmm. So the way guns work in Mass Effect 1 is that inside they have just a block of tungsten, I think it is, or lead, or just some other base metal. Yes. Yeah. Every time you pull the trigger, a paint flex sized piece of that metal is sheared off and launched through the Mass Effect relay. And it's like, yeah, like tiny, turn. tiny little insignificant portion of metal, but yeah. it's being shot at like yeah, a portion of the speed of light. And they say that as a result, every single gun in the Mass Effect One universe has effectively infinite ammunition because every single gun can fire for about ten thousand rounds before that piece of metal needs to be replaced. And you can even have a conversation with Garrus where he talks about how look at that guy, don't give a fuck. <laughs> oh god, he just oh, like, oh, god. like a man. And even Gara says like, yeah, one time my gun ran out during a firefight, I didn't know that could happen. Right, yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it never happens. And the, they explain, well, what about a shotgun? What does a shotgun do? Oh, here he is. Like, what does a shotgun do? Well, a shotgun just fires multiple pieces. A sniper rifle fires faster projectiles, gets longer, it has a longer Mass Effect relay. Mm -hmm. they, they say, no, that technology sucks, we got rid of it. Universe wide, and now everything uses yeah. clips. Sorry. Yeah. I forgot this is all new to you, right? Like, every the single gun in every location has all moved to like thermal clip yeah. technology, even though that's uh, like it seems like a worse move Thanks. technology wise. It's a, it's a massive downgrade because you mm -hmm. go from having a gun that can fire 
10,000 bullets before being needing to be reloaded to one where it fires eight. Yeah. Usually they fight four and no matter where you go, everywhere in the universe has seemingly possible. adopted this technology, with no exceptions. Like not a single bandit on a planet has kept one of these guns. They seemingly have the greatest gun recall in, like, the history of ever. Because mm -hmm. not a single one of those guns from Mass Effect 1 exists anymore. <laughs> it's, so annoying. it's like they had, um... Oh, what, what's the name when, like, they, they tell everyone? Like, is it an amnesty? Welcome back to your life. Yeah. Where, like, they just get make everyone give their guns in. And it it's makes like, no sense. It's it like they did so that, but then... then put out new versions of guns to the entire galaxy. Well, that's like, it doesn't make sense either because the way it worked before is in-universe much cooler, makes mm -hmm. more sense, and is super cool and futuristic, but also, you didn't need to reload you had the overheat system. Yeah. Guns didn't, like, well, you know, have a clip of eight. They didn't have eight bullets in the clip, but they did overheat after eight bullets, which is effectively, it's effectively the same thing. But Carl, like, this is now a more action-y shooter type game. We need to have clips, right? What's more God action than your gun got infinite ammo? It's the most <laughs> action you can possibly have. You can also, just shoot yeah. forever. Um, take note of, like, scientists have spent two years putting us back together. In so there is years, a two-year time skip. So they got rid of every gun in the universe. Yeah, I can imagine. I so, think yeah. what they do to explain it away is they say shields got so much better that these new guns are the only things that can penetrate them. Mm -hmm. but are you telling me that everyone also got a brand new shield? That's more unbelievable than everyone getting a new gun. That everyone bought new shields as well? Uh, it's like, what about my crew? Were there any other survivors from the Normandy? I'll tell you what. You help me finish off these mechs. And I'll play you know my favorite bit is, you can just see that you're constantly getting shot while it's happening. Yeah. Just give the order when you want me to hit him. Oh, look, Lucas, you're low on thermal clips. If only there was a solution. <laughs> That's the thing. Your literal first introduction to the concept is the guy being like, we're out of ammo. Yep. Within, what, five minutes of gameplay, their existence is already. Like, we, well, we pick up a gun and it's like, you've got no ammo in your gun. It's already worse in that one moment. Yeah, because that's the thing. Do you know what? Never run out of ammo. Every gun okay. from Mass Effect 1. <laughs> oh, well, they weren't as powerful. Well, mine was. It fired fucking acid rounds. <laughs> yeah, my one shot people. My pistol was taking out everything. And that's why it's so annoying. Of like, If the gu guns in the first game were just like, they had, they overheated, the last thing I remember and that was it. And they never, If they never explained how they worked, it'd be less annoying. Just about but the fact that they explain how they work, and it makes so much sense, it's grounded in the universe they built, it's really cool, it's unique. I've never heard of any other universe having like guns that work like that. And they get rid of it to make it more like Gears of War. Mm -hmm. um, also, yeah, it just says like, navigated Presley and like one other member died. Um, the rest of the crew all made it out because you were like, you know, a badass hero badass. that got them all into the escape pods in time. You know it's like Shepard, your vagina is so care. massive, you saved two everybody. They've moved on. All of that, just like, it's been two years and all your crew survived. Do you know where they all are? It's like, right. no, we haven't been keeping tabs on all of these people. We've not been keeping tabs on the most important people to Shepard's life, even though he wants to control Shepard. <laughs> if you want to control someone, the best way to do that is like the people they care most about. Maybe you can track them down after we get off the station. If we get off oh, the God. station. That's always a good sign when like you've got two internet providers and you can't get one connection. Like, can you just ring them up and like be like, can I can I combine? Can you do the fusion dance while I've got What's two providers? Depends where the mechs are thickest. It's probably best if you. So this is like one of the other um, uh, romanceable options, right? Is Jacob, can he, is he bisexual? He, can you romance him as a male or female shepherd? I've like never attempted to romance Jacob, but I know zero information about Jacob romance options. Boring as fuck. Well, let's he, is, he's, he is just, he's like Caden in the first game of just Mr. Milk Toast Man. And like just the most like boring, generic, like I am a soldier type character. Yeah, but it is worth like, pointing out they did put a lot book. more. Um, uh, yeah, they put a lot more um, uh, romance options here. into this game. Yeah. Yes, yeah. We can get into the service tunnels through this door. Uh, so he is romanceable, but only for a female shepherd. Oh, okay. The thing is, though, he's a handsome-looking dude. Yeah, he's a, he's a he's a good if like a bit generic-looking guy, but he's just a bit bland with like a pretty stereotypical backstory, 
It's like nothing's bad, Incoming. but nothing's like great or memorable about him either. Yeah, that's the thing. It's the same with Caden. Of like, Caden can can like, you know, grow on people, and is like he's not a bad guy, but he's just, just so he's a very like he's like the safe option that you want to bring home to your parents because he's just like, you know, he, yeah. he's always stuck to the book. And the most interesting thing about him is that he's black. Hmm. Because well, I mean, like, like you... I, I I I think mean, there is a bit of an interesting yeah. backstory as well. We but again, I like, mean, Default female shepherd is white, and he's black, so that's an interracial relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't something commonly seen in video games or media? No, not often, to be fair. It's one of those things that, um, if you go look for it, of um, interracial relationships, specifically concerned with containing black men, um, almost always have the woman be Latina. Really? Yeah. It's one of those weird, one of those tropes that you don't notice until it's pointed out. Yeah, yeah. And it's to the point where it's like Rosario Dawson has been that character in three different movies. Right. Bastards got me in the leg. I remember you, Wilson. You were there the first time gained consciousness. Yeah, that was me. Oh crap! Speaking of generic. Yeah, I was just thinking that. He fixed my leg. He looks like his character model's not even finished. Oh look at that! There should be. There should be some med gel on the wall. Shepard, how about you go to the med station over there and use some med gel on him? And med gel should be one of those things that everyone has like 50 in their back pocket at all times. Mm -hmm. like, if it's specifically med gel as well, it's not like a first aid kit that you've got to carry around. Like It's like a little pack of gel or something. It's like, is it really that hard to store? I'd just like to remind everybody as well that we're in a universe where Commander Shepard got Master Chiefed into space and they rebuilt them but joker's legs still don't work yeah. <laughs> but like joker's fair, legs don't... it's very specifically like the only reason you are alive is because like cerberus pump billions into fixing you they do do that but this is also a universe with gel that you rub on bullet wounds yeah yeah are you telling me aliens never figured out how to fix his legs we need to find miranda I think it's what he literally uses a crutch in one scene. It's like, you've not got anything better than crutches. <laughs> the robots! There's no way she survived. A bunch of mechs won't drop Miranda. She's alive. Then where is she? Why haven't we heard? Is that like one of like never forget that Cassandra Kane is like is it Cassandra like his Oracle? Or she's a traitor. And has legs that don't work in the universe where Cyborg exists. Oh yeah. Like Batgirl is crippled in a universe where Batman has like robot armor. But like that's the thing. I don't know how often Oracle is in a wheelchair because then like there's times where it's like she's become Batgirl again after being paralyzed and stuff. Even Christian Bale had the leg brace that made his like mm -hmm. broken knee stab. The really cool thing of like, oh, what if Batman has like this really bad leg and has to like cope with it? Is it's fixed now? Yeah, he he put a bit of metal on it. Concrete. Don't worry. Yeah. Not when he kicks through concrete and it shows how strong his leg is. Mm -hmm. And then Ben him in like a headlock and Batman's struggling and he steps on his toes. We're here, she's not. We need to save ourselves. The shuttle bay is only a few. Oh no, three mechs, what are we ever gonna do? Commander Shepherd should look at them and they should just you know stop I... working. I don't think I've ever had a combat drone ability before. I don't think I've played Engineer. So it's interesting to just get this little, like, hologram buddy that's, like, gonna just help us out. But obviously, it's not been leveled up yet, so it's not very helpful yet. Yeah, I don't know where Use overload on the crate, so I didn't even notice it was telling me to. Uh... That's it. The only oh, thing we blew up was Jacob. We took it though. He did. Okay, we took him down, but this is getting tense. Shepard, if I tell you who we work for, will you trust me? I, I love how this is like built up as well, because Cerberus are like a non-entity in the first game. It's your ass, Jacob. Oh yeah, so they have to like um, uh, make them seem like really shady. Controlled by Cerberus. Oh yeah, Brute. He doesn't have the barnet leg brace when he skates, but his knee just works again. Shut up. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But that, the thing is, that series is great, but there's so many plot holes. That third one might be one of 
It's like there are plot holes. Do you know like the cinema sins thing of there's plot holes in every movie? Mm -hmm. I think The Dark Knight Rises is one of the few movies where obvious glaring pop plot holes are obvious to people who don't care about that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I watched that film with my dad, and even my dad was saying, How did he get back to Gotham? Yeah, yeah. He's not one who normally notices, like, that's. He doesn't really care or notice them. Maybe but even he's like, How did Batman get back to Gotham? It's like, Shut up. I like that. Um, just. Oh. Um, I've never heard of them. And he goes, like, Oh, that's a, that's a side effect of your surgery. You've had a lot of history with Cerberus in the past. I feel like they might be mentioning, like, the Shadow Broker DLC or something. No, because that's this game. I thought you deserved to know what's what. Isn't there like DLC in the first one where they mention what's something about the Shadow Broker? Like, the one, I think that like Volus mentions them or something. It. The Shadow Broker is mentioned, I believe, yeah. Yeah, and are they something to do with the Shadow Broker? Or is it a completely separate thing? Completely separate. Oh, because like Liara is like involved in sure, some point, yeah, isn't she? Yeah, 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 it's fine. Okay. We don't need to, we don't need to go into that. We really is. It was a cold we'll get into that when we get into the DLC. Kind of stuck. All, right, all three games are just like in my head, mixed mm -hmm. up. I'll never work for Cerberus. Spoilers, you're going to work for Cerberus. <laughs> it's like, you know what? You're going you to work so hard for Cerberus. Answer my questions. All of them. They spent a lot of money and time bringing you back. Yeah, it's like, we spent all of our money and two years of, like, complete, you know, unfettered, like, project time and uh, resources just on bringing you one human back to life. The thing is, they bring you back and they don't even know if you're going to agree with them or not. <laughs> I respect the idea, though, that, like, we're not going to bring back the body of Shepard and, like, you know, that's it. It's No, well, actually, we we want to, like, have a Shepard that is the same Shepard that we, like, persuade onto our side. It's not just, like, your mind controlled by them or anything. But you know what? You don't know what cool robot shit they're putting there. No. What do you uh, think when they look at you? They just see you like taking these bullets like an absolute champion. That flashbang just. It's all those those new powerful shields I've got got. Yes. I like that the callback drone is just sitting in the back, like giving little zaps in the back, like. It's not doing nothing, but it's also not doing very much. It's not like compared to throw where you just pick enemies up and it's like they stop to be like they cease to exist. I'm waiting for when like you fully upgrade it and it becomes just like a battle mech that turns up behind people. Just put it in it's another shepherd. <laughs> oh, I forgot we get a different hacking mini game, of course. Oh the hacking mini game sucks ass. Oh, it's the era of hacking games. Yeah. Fuck you, Bioshock. See it's Bioshock that started this, right? You popularized it. Uh, like Bioshock, it might have popularized it. It definitely didn't start it, but... But it had, like, that really shitty, like, connect the... Pipes. The, um, the uh... pipes. And the pipes was essentially, like, a different... Like, uh, you know one of those things where, like, the hacking minigame in Bioshock was essentially a game previously? It was, like, a minigame, yeah. No, like, as it must have been, like... I think there's, like, a retro game that basically was just that hacking yeah, sorry, game. Yeah, was... Like a flash game or something, yeah. But... Something like that, yeah. Like, it was just like, you know, back in the day when, like, things were simple, it's just like pipe hack or something like that. And it, then they just put that into Bioshock and it's like, hey, look. Basically, I remember that. that about, like, Day FX, where the hacking minigame in that, they said that was literally the first thing we had done. It was finished within two weeks of development. Which, and like, I think it's H Bomber Guy who did a review of it, worked out that if you played all the way through all Deus Ex, you probably played the hacking minigame more than the developers did. <laughs> oh, oh, it's just showing the yeah, throat! Did you see just that? Straight away, just in the throat. What are you doing? This is a character you're supposed to like, by the way. My job. Wilson betrayed us all. You should have taken him alive, see what he knew. Too risky. I've put too much time and effort... Keep in mind, we have strong feelings about people now. on our team shooting people. <laughs> Not anymore. I like that. Just, like I knew he was lying. I knew he was lying all along, obviously. Oh, I like how you can do that. Like, you didn't know he was. <laughs> Some people are far too trusting to ever see that coming. Come on, let's grab this shuttle. And, and the thing is... My boss wants to speak like, to you. Now we have no way of guaranteeing that like 
he actually did betray us, and it's not just Miranda covering her own ass. Oh yeah, she just shot him. She just shot him and went, he's the one who betrayed us. It's his fault all these mechs sacks. It's like, oh, that's a real good cover-up for the person who actually did it. Is to kill someone and be like, yeah, they, they were the one who set this whole thing off. Do you want to talk more about Miranda? Like, do you want to talk to her? Or two, or you just, or you like me, where you just don't Come give on. a shit. I don't care right now. They don't give like a lot of the early game prompts, like especially in that bit, are like, "Who's Cerberus? Who's the elusive man?" You'll find out later. You don't need yeah. to ask me that. You can talk to the elusive man. It's like I will say that the elusive man. Like, that's exactly what I want my apartment to look Before like. You meet with the man, I just want the giant glowing sun outside. <laughs> yeah. Come on, Miranda. More tests. Jacob's, why is Jacob suddenly turning to Raiden from Mortal Kombat? What do you mean? His eyes glowing. Oh, yeah. His eyes are glowing blue. The contrast on the eyes. Like... He just got Raiden powers. What the hell? Like Jacob, the god of thunder. <laughs> Did you say two years? Even though earlier we've already established that, but yeah, sure. It's been two years. And 12 days. Yeah, there was that bit where we were like getting all of the exploded pieces of your body from like that fell from atmosphere and burned up but other than that most of your time was spent on operating table don't worry about it what should be a joke about if like we put like your left foot on wrong as long as you have a toe missing i'm honestly surprised that for this game like they didn't give you heterochromia to make your head oh god bastards. i think it was like this game was a little bit before games started doing that I had friends who were there. Oh man, they're in Final Fantasy X. True. Yeah, true. We in Final Fantasy X and Sonic. And I think Final Fantasy X is the only game to pull it off. Because you don't even know it's it. And the reason she has heterochromia is because she's like half Albert. Mm. Um, also, the, the little chunk, little Oryx, is getting littler. He's doing well. He's getting some shape to him. He's good. Um... It's like, it turns out that dieting is quite easy if someone else is in charge of just restricting everything you eat. Uh, we're just putting them on. Putting them on that very strict diet. Um, Why did we leave her behind? Because, like... You know what? We're done here. I don't want you questioning why, like, Ashley the Spacist got killed. We should move on. There are other tests we really should Every time you mention a name, Shepard should genuinely like who. Memories are there, and I can vouch for Shepard's combat skills personally. I suppose you're right. I like that, because it's, oh, it's a nice oh, way of being like, our little field test as what other decisions that you made in Mass Effect 1 kind of kind of deal. Um, like Shepard's work on with my fish, okay. <laughs> it's all feed my fish. That's this game, but... It's like spoiler alert, no one ever feeds the fish. <laughs> the thing is, I don't, I think one of my favourite like screenshots that floats around every now and again. It's all like I just completed Mass Effect, but oh, what cost? It's the dead fish. Like, I don't consider it a perfect Paragon run if you don't save your fish. <laughs> um... It's so weird though. I like not automated that. Like, the reason so many people let the fish die is they never. It's not. You don't expect to have to feed them yourself. Oh, Carl, do you want the recon hood? This old DLC bullshit. Uh, not all of it, but, like, the recon hood, I think, was. I like that. If you put a helmet on, it gives you 5% extra health, but I don't like always wearing the helmet. But obviously, then you're wearing a helmet during all the conversations and cutscenes and stuff. I'll make Baldur's Gate's the worst for that, because they know, obviously, you have the option to turn off your helmets during the game. Because obviously you're talking to people all the time, mm -hmm. but for the final cutscene in the game, for some reason they always make you wear your helmet. So all my teammates running look like fucking goobers because <laughs> they're all wearing helmets in the final thing, and obviously the helmets don't match their outfits because they just give them buffs. I don't give a shit what the helmet like looks like. It's just there to give them, like extra health or or what? like stats on this one thing. What main color do you want to go, Carl? I can't fight armor. The mo. Oh, kind of like you know the dark, dark purple. That was quite good. Oh, the like, blue. Ooh, that looks good. That royal one. spacey blue. I like iridescent like blue. the nice purpley blue kind of colour. Clean. Ooh, the white accents.
That's not bad. We'll go with that for now. I don't hate that. I hate these patterns on it, though. They just, just make just it look it. Too, too much. It's too messy. Yeah. Let's like also have that matching. There we go. But looking simple and nice. They all look better. You know what? I I'm gonna oh. oh I don't remember jacket. that outfit. What? That was pretty. I like that. I like the casual one. That's the like, only one that actually looks pretty casual. I always liked putting her in like the formal dress, just because yeah, I think it's funny as <laughs> like the casual appearance. But like, they, like that, that like one's pretty cool. Yeah, a jacket. That's the thing is, like, our shepherd would wear that in casual clothing. It's like, I'm not wearing the form-fitting, asshole-hugging outfit of everyone else on my day off. <laughs> um, what what call, what class did Carl choose in Baldur's Gate? I played Monk at first, played a Drow Monk, and my mm. current playthrough is a Tiefling Bard. Oh, nice. How, how is the Bard playthrough? Because I want to go for like a chaotic experience, and I presumed a Bard would be the option. The Bard is really good uh, because the Bard basically is a different game because it's all um, uh, charisma. Oh, okay, so, that so sounds like a run I want to try out. Yeah. You, can just, you can just talk your way out of it or threaten everybody. Mm -hmm. I thought we'd be meeting face to face. Especially if I'm doing like a co-op run a where it's like general I'll probably pick something like a, a, a sorcerer or a warlock or something like that. It's also really good for support as well because obviously you can... One of the moves is literally just chat shit and your opponent gets pissed off. Like, I always I, I always aspire to be like the chaotic evil kind of mentality and it's like a bard sounds like it would be fitting. Mm -hmm. um, is it Martin Sheen? What, this is like the big get for the game? Yeah, it is, yeah. A lot of big... Na obviously, there's like, some good voice actors in this game. Like, you got Steve Bloom and uh, Michael BT and stuff like that. And obviously, Mark Mia as Shepard and Jen Hale. I was going to say, and Jennifer Hale, yeah. But Martin Sheen was like the big name get they got. And as you can tell, he never he never leaves this room because Martin Sheen did all his voice lines in one day. Yeah, he's like, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to spend eight hours reading my script and leave. A big old bag of money. No yeah, I'm not doing no fucking mocap. But it's still a very good performance and good character. It is, yeah. I, he's very enigmatic. I like, I like him as a. He has a very good voice. Good like, there's a lot of talk about um, celebrities not being good voice back. actors, and Martin Sheen is a very good voice actor, at least in this game. No one wants to admit he has that very um, uh, understated in, um, uh, intimidation about his voice. Yes, but his voice does look like it's about 20 years mismatched from his body. Yes, because he's like the elusive man looks way too young for Martin Sheen's voice. Mm -hmm. Martin Sheen's a bit older. Of course, yeah. Looks like why me? Why the fuck do you think you're fucking Commander Shepard? He's had a lot of stuff. Have you seen as well, Lucas? Um, um, Anthony. Uh, see, Anthony Starr, Homelander, has uh, confirmed he's not the voice of Homelander in Mortal Kombat One. Of course not. They have to well, that's the thing. Do you know what's annoying though? They got J.K. Simmons. That's the thing. Yeah. I'd rather if you're not if you're not gonna get everyone, don't bother. But like Anthony Starr, you can tell he seems like the kind of person that's like, I'm gonna do Home Wonder and I'm gonna piss off, and like I'm don't get me involved okay. in any bullshit on the side. Like he but just seems like one of those angry. guys. He signed over his likeness though. Mm -hmm. Not his voice. Yeah, but the, the but like, signing over your likeness is money with no work, whereas signing over like you know to go do voice acting is work. He did the voice for like the cartoon. Like did he? And he? He did it for Call of Duty as well. Mm. That's so he did, weird. He did the voice then. for Call of Duty. Yeah, that is weird the then. That's the Mortal Kombat 11 all over again, where they didn't get Arnold Schwarzenegger to do the Terminator, but they got Sylvester Stallone to do Rambo. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not going to get everyone, don't bother, because it just makes it more awkward, or don't base it on his appearance in the show. I like this as well, like, you know, obviously we, we confirmed last time, we're like, the, we wanted the council to, like, be better, and instead the game went, no, we're going to make it all about humanity, and then the elusive man is also like, well, if we leave the, the council or the alliance to, like, try and save humanity, then nothing will be left if we don't do anything. It's like we have Shit, to go around their decision-making and just, like, 
be Cerberus and go protect humanity ourselves. Basically putting you in the same position you were in the first game. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna make like the the whole reason you made a, a Spectre is because Spectres can like you know go basically cut the red tape with the official channels and now they're saying the official channels aren't fast enough because mm -hmm. I imagine they must have gotten rid of like Spectres after all the nonsense that went on with Saren. <laughs> yeah, probably. And their solution is let's just make super Spectres that are even more above the law. Uh, hi fish. I hope um it's good emergency lesbian stuff, not bad emerge. But yeah, have a good time. Hopefully. Thanks for popping in. Humanity's all good. Humanity's great. Fighting a war doesn't seem like Cerberus. Do you think about any other like celebrity voice actors who did quite good in video games? Uh, but JK, Megan Fox apparently did a really good job in the new Mortal Kombat. But hers is so funny. <laughs> but what makes it funny as well? Because all she had to do was overact. Yeah, yeah. Like, all she had to do was overact, and she doesn't. And she's quite good at overacting. She's really good. Like she does, like Jennifer's body. She has a Jennifer's body reference in the game. Mm. Like where is Jennifer's body? It's like I'll never tell. All she needs to do was be more sarcastic with it, and it'd be fine. Miranda killed Wilson in cold blood. Jacob's just a gun for hire. Just so weird. Jacob's okay. just a gun for hire. It's like immediately Jacob's just getting shit from Shepard. Exactly Do you know who's a gun for hire though? Thank. Yeah, true. Ways than one. Jacob's a soldier. Um, I mean, obviously, like you know, um, we talked about them in this game, and like they are a voice actor and they are a celebrity at the same time. But Keith David. Oh, yeah, Keith David's a fantastic voice actor. Like that thing is so he's. Like he's such a good voice actor that I don't I don't really classify him as like a celebrity that's doing a good voice acting job as like a one off. It's like no, he's just a good voice actor as well. Yeah, so he was spawning more Combat Eleven as well. He came back to do that. Mm. That's what's making me me think so weird about it because they got J.K. Simmons and I'd argue J.K. Simmons is bigger than Anthony Starr. Oh, I think so, presumably yeah. going to get John Cena and John Cena. He's probably going to do it, and he's, I'd say he's bigger than Anthony Starr. Like, John Cena's not going to do it because it's not for the kids. Who is it? He's Peacekeeper. He's Peacekeeper. No, I'm, I'm joking because it's like, it, cause it's oh. not like a, a Make-A-Wish Foundation thing. It's like he's not involved. <laughs> Which is what's weird, and it can't be like something to do with the writer's strike because that's why they got Megan Fox. Mm -hmm. Because... Writer strike stops them from appearing in movies, but not video games. Yes, yeah. That's why so many people went and did like video game sponsorships and stuff. And like I said, he did the voice for Call of Duty, so he can't even be for like, oh, I don't like the violence or whatever, because he's on the boys. Or I don't want to be involved in video games or something. Yeah. Let's hope you're able to do the same. Such a baffle. Unless he is going to be the voice, and he's just not hammered down the details yet. Maybe. Or maybe he's not allowed. Yeah. Uh, what's your problem? Are you this bitchy, or is it just me? Just. You I, always did it. For your abilities, it's your I like this. Immediately, Shepard comes in with the attitude of like, Jacob's useless and Miranda's a bitch. Let's get her going. Poor Shepard. Jesus. Give me but like, spot. Miranda has been a bit of a bitch of like, oh, only time will tell if you prove to be an asset or a liability. It's like, Obviously fuck off. Like, your boss spent 8 billion credits reviving me. How much did he spend on you? Nothing. <laughs> okay, bye. <laughs> Also, he immediately, even though it's like not proven that I've recovered from this like I'm glad experiment, is like us, immediately makes us the commander of those two. Yeah, like, in, like that's the one. You've been like awake, up, my, fresh off the operating table in five minutes. Already had eight confirmed kills to your name. <laughs> Do you trust me, commander? No. No, I don't. But I've just met you. Fair enough. I can't expect you to trust me. But I, re I respect the respect. I'll just have to earn that. Yeah, I think uh, Jacob is a soldier, so he is like he's similar to Caden yes. and Ashley in that way of as much as you can dislike them, you can never like really just dis dislike them. You can't you can dislike them, but you can't like not appreciate them because they yes. are sort and they do follow the chain of command, which is why Ashley is such a notable outlier. So this is what we get for um being an imported level forty seven character is like um Start at level two. I believe it's like when you hit level fifty, you get a bigger bump here. But uh, we didn't. We get to level forty-seven, so we got start at level two, one hundred twenty thousand credits, um, a bunch of the 
different like four elements and then like some paragon and renegade points it's, and it's like it's, dlc right? it's really difficult without the dlc and without importing your character to actually hit like the end game paragon and renegade points yeah you have to do a lot of scraping mm -hmm. yeah it's, it's weird though because like you think nowadays that'd be pre-order bonus do you have any orders that, well, that wouldn't yeah. be a thing of like you it wouldn't be you played the previous game here's a reward for doing that never be. forget that maybe the most canonically important squad member out of all of your mass effect 3 crew was like an eight pound like pre-order dlc or something was that oh it was the uh, the Javik. Jarek, wasn't it he was, yeah 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 he was a. Uh, I, I never got him either. we won't, won't a, talk about who, like who or what they are but they are very important to the character like to the to the game and they yeah, are I know the lot behind the a paywall. Yeah. I never had him on my squad, so I'd always see screenshots. Like, Who the fuck's this weirdo? Mm -hmm. um, do you have any orders? Just do whatever the fuck it takes. This, and take them down. Nothing gets um, this is the one where you can like probe your anus, yes. Good to have you here, Shepard. I like that system. A lot of people complained about it, but I just really liked reading all the information about the planets. You never had a reason to in the previous game unless you could travel to it. Mm -hmm. This one, like while you're scanning the surface of the planet, it just gives you a little bit of in-universe explanation. Some of them are really fun. It'd be nice if like um, they had like audio logs for all of them, rather than just text. Yeah. Or, uh... Some of them are quite fun. I like the one where like they'll talk about how uh, like if you go to the Milky Way, for example, they'll talk about how humanity expanded out. And I'll say like, when you go to like Neptune, for example, I'll say well it's known for high amounts of like this element, and as humanity like strayed further and further away from the bonds of the Earth. It was a valuable stop-off point for um, reaching the Mass Effect relay at the edge of the universe and stuff like that. Mm. It's a nice little bit of world building of it. Like if you just read all those, it tells you how humanity got further and further away from Earth, and I appreciate that they did that. Oh, we can't. Aren't your combat drone super powerful. Honestly, like max level combat drone. Or can you not? You only got one point. Well, we had four, so let's put one into set mastery. Oh, okay into the combat drone then. Oh no, I'll like, I just want to see, like... cool. What does the combat drone level two do? do uh, you get anything so cool? what's it do? Um make it fly longer, make it more durable, increase the frequency of the attacks. Ooh. And then number four is evolve the combat drone into an attack drone that upgrades um if electric shot damage. Um Limit is one active drone at a time, and then the explosive drone. When combat drone is destroyed, it pulses energy inflicting high damage on all. This is a free grenade. And it nice doesn't one. it doesn't sound like that one is um, limited to one at a time. Oh, so yeah, yeah, like you can see that yeah, we're what maybe like a, a seventh of the way to getting our renegade bar. It's not a massive, massive. Junk, but it's significant when, like, mm -hmm. you know, you think some of those end game decisions you need to be in like the last fifth of that bar, yeah, to be able to like just select that option in dialogue. Like that is a, a, a cool decent chunk. It's a nice feature that, like, you know, your gameplay in the previous game is influ uh, basically influence your reputation. Mm -hmm. It gives you like tangible gameplay quirks and changes that you can make in this version. Uh, where is this? Wrong way. Are we in squad, right? Not in squad. So you can change it. Guess so you can change like equipment and stuff. I think it might be like in the weapons lockers in the game in like oh, the, so you uh, can't even change it mid combat anymore. Uh, let's best up. Keep me your shotgun. Uh, well, it's getting a bit... like the the right series now. teaser that like they did recently for N Seven Day, um, it did actually allude to Andromeda as well. So it looks like they are yeah. scrapping the existence of Andromeda. They are continuing like the fact that all four games damage. still you know exist and stuff um, it's gonna be really people, easy with more andromeda it happened in the past people were assuming that 
they would just drop Andromeda because of like, you know, the, the reception and the feedback. But the teaser had like, um, Andromeda distress signal received or something like that. But it's Shepard's back, right? Uh, we assume the so. We assume I thought so. it was like the team was like a picture of Shepard. It wasn't a picture of Shepard, it was like a picture of like a crash ship armor. or something. Yeah, it was the armor, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. And then this new tease was just like someone walking down a room with armor on. And I'd like, say just fuck it. The game isn't coming out for another like six years, so they're, they're just keeping it very vague and making sure people know like. Yeah, Mass Effect still is going to exist. Don't worry about it. Here's the thing. They could make it and just say it's between two and three and it's just Shepard on holiday. I'd play it. <laughs> say it's a dating sim. Make it a dating sim and just say it's Shepard just rolling around. I'd play that. And people will probably notice by like the end of the game because like the things line up with the pins. Like it, This one and this one, if they're placed there, they always link together. So by the end of it, like when you start learning the patterns, you're just like, boop, 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 boop. And it's really nice and easy. And at least it's not like the time restricted button presses like it was in the first game. It's a bit more interesting. Like, I do think oh, that's that a better hacking mini game than the first game. Yeah, but, which is press button. Yeah, it's just like, but is there any need either way? The it's real like, question. Oh, God, no, the mech blew up. And that is one thing I like that they added, um, like, bits of damage and dismemberment in this game right but there. that's only against the robot enemies because otherwise we go look who it is like it's spoiled by the subtitle did you see that yeah yeah that's why i like, that's why i often argue against subtitles like if if someone wants to watch something with subtitles i don't mind it but the issue is i'm always reading the subtitles before things happen on screen so it like spoils against, things in yeah. advance for me I argue against bad subtitles because like what I'd have done for those subtitles is I'd have just put Quarian. Mm. I'd have put Quarian Soldier until you learn their names. Also, I like this response of like, "Not are you alive? It's me." It's like, "Don't point guns at me, Tally. You fucking dickhead." You know what I do to people who threaten me. Praza, tell your team to put their. Tally's like, "Shit, yeah, I'm glad like, these people still got heads." This is bullshit. Why would your old commander work for Cerberus? I don't know. But if this is Shepard, right now, you should have the option to just push Miranda out of frame and bring Tally in. <laughs> <laughs> just like push her over the front. Like, come on, Tally, you know where this is going. Uh, yeah, that's, that's very true. Subtitles should learn information as you look. Like, if like you don't know subtitle. who a character is talking yet, it shouldn't have a character name yet. Like, good subtitles can be really fun storytelling. But I love um, subtitles. I'm not working for them. Look at Jacob. He's like, what? Specific <laughs> I know why you're here. One of our people was you can tell it's a game from 2010, though, because everyone's, like, stood up in a very rigid position, like, moving like fucking 90s Batman, like... Ugh. I've seen footage of Starfield. <laughs> I didn't say that Starfield was modern. I said that this was not. Okay. That's the Starfield that is still that a 2010 game as well, Carl. Yeah, I because I looked up footage after me and you talked about it today of like, is it as, like, is it that Everybody bad? And it's like, holy shit, yeah. Especially it's like Vitor's Baldur's Gate. Bad. Yeah, people do stand there stock still. Mm -hmm. Like Asteria, so because he's like, you know, sassy gay vampire man. He gives mm -hmm. the flair. He, yeah. he, he gives you it. He he's got the facial animations and he's got like, you know, he'll stand stock still because obviously you don't always Come model on, to like fly out of frame. But he puts some stats on it. He's like... When he you know what? Landing, he hid in a warehouse I wish it was more than what I'm about to say, but it is just Space Skyrim. And that's enemy. fine if you want Space Skyrim. But I didn't want Space Skyrim on a thousand planets. I would like Space Skyrim on, like, all planets that you can actually explore a good amount of. Be mass effect. Also and not just, like, for... a bunch of procedurally generated blobs. Mm. Like, cool. So we already had, um... Uh... No Man's Sky wants. Vitor's the only one who can tell us. And it took No Man's Sky like five years to get good. Good idea. You'll need. Yeah. So, but, but a little detail about this you'll notice you can see almost Tally's face. Mm -hmm. That wasn't present in the first game. Like you see her eyes. You can see like the silhouette of her nose. It was a present feature. a little bit in Mass Effect One, but definitely not as pronounced. 
And it's very pronounced in this one because she is romanceable. Right, yeah. Because, because a lot, again, a lot of people in the first game, like, I really like Tally Waikata Romancer. It's like, well, do you not like Liara? What could, what, like, don't you want to slap nothing? It's like, no, I want to bang Tally. And the fact that so many like the people writing the game wrote Tally and never thought people would be attracted to her as a character. Mm, weird. So we can't see her face. You can't see if she's a supermodel underneath there. It's like, but I like her personality. It was nothing personal. We can argue over who killed who later. Right is, now, is this the legendary edition? Yes. It is. Yeah. We work together. Well, this has the really embarrassing um, uh, Photoshop job. Make sure to keep in radio. What do you mean? We'll do. So, uh, in Mass Effect 3, side. depending on who you romanced in Mass Effect 2, you have a photo of them on your desk. Okay. Like, it's a little Easter egg. Like, whoever you romanced in this game, you have like a photo of them on your desk. If it's Ashley, you have a photo of Ashley. If mm -hmm. it's Garrish, you have a photo of Garrish. If it's Tally, there's a photo of Tally without a mask on. And it's the only time you see without a mask on. The but they just photoshopped. Um, it's literally just a lady on Photoshop. On stop model, sorry. If you search for like attractive woman, <laughs> and they just photoshop her face to be blue, <laughs> and that's it. It's so bad. Oh god, I didn't know that. Because like, obviously one of the cool things about her race is that you don't know what she looks like under there. It's, it's all that, way like, cooler uh, that you don't know, yeah. Yeah, and there's all that really cool fan art of her of uh, like being like a grey alien almost, or like insectoid. Mm. She only has like three fingers, and canonically she just looks like a hot human lady. Of course, yeah. Which is, which is so much less interesting. I do like that the sprint in this game, like, you actually haul ass as opposed to, um, in Mass one Effect second. 1. Like, Shepard runs for about one second. It oh, yeah, like, it is, it's not for a long time, just for a good time. And, yeah, this is another thing, is, like, regenerate, regenerating health. I don't, which I think is just, like, a nice, like, positive thing. Some people like, get, like, annoyed about it, but... It it's comes like, from an era when they wanted you to pay more money when you died. It can die. It can stay in the past. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, but health doesn't regenerate in real life. I think you'll find it does. <laughs> it literally and, does. Not to the same I extent. I introduced you a concept called sleep. <laughs> But like, yeah, you can't it. take a bullet, hide behind cover for 10 seconds and be alright later. We can still catch but, you know, if you take a bullet shot, you will slowly heal. Like, everyone's got, like, mega super healing in games, but... Yeah, so it's a few... You got med gel. Just say your suit's got med gel in the lining. When they shoot it, it heals. Duh. Yeah. Done. And just say the suit we gave is you is high tech. One I'm thing I really don't like in terms of the combat changes is um, the fact that, the of... well, uh, you have your abilities, but now like your ability is on one cooldown timer. You don't get access uh... to like eight abilities with eight different cooldown timers. That little circle that comes into the middle, that's my ability that's cooldown timer. Or like, can you pick which? when I get you to pick use which my next ability Shepard, in general. Yeah, because you used to be able to have like eight, and I think that's another thing that they said, nobody used all of them. Take People just used one ability the entire game, so we made it more simple. And it's like, okay, but I liked doing like throw into hack into um, uh, biotic rush. And now you have to do that by like either wait until end game, where you've got like a bunch of really fast cooldowns because you've upgraded them all, or you have to like pick synergistic squad mates and use like the one ability you've got each of like, you know, get Jacob to pull and then you throw. Which is what's weird, because you think that'd be a thing that'd be present in the first game. Because if this game's more combat heavy, you think they'd want you to combine abilities for cool combat moments. Mm -hmm. Like combining like abilities seems like something that you add into a game, not remove. Yeah, this game is very much like use an ability, shoot for a bit, use another ability, whereas Mass Effect 1 could be like, I'm going to stand here and use all six abilities and then we could... Like, shoot for a minute. There's combat abilities in Mass Effect 1, where, like, combat encounters are, where you never shot a gun. You yeah, yeah. Two. Which is weird, like I said, this game has, like, more focus on combat, but the combat is so much, like, simpler mm -hmm. than it is in Mass Effect 1. It's what makes it so strange. Like, the focus was combat, but they made it worse. Oh, but see, you do, um, obviously, you have... The options you have are limited. You do have the system of, like, um, shield, armor, and health in this one. Which is a bit more nuanced of like, you know, you use things like um, warp 
and um, warp and like incendiary stuff to on armor to weaken that. But use like overload and stuff on shields. I think there's also barriers as well. Yeah. It's very cool, but I, I just, it feels one of those. Uh, combining abilities in the first game was always so fun. Mm hmm. But being able to freeze and then, like, throw someone. Or freeze and biotic charge, where you just, like, fucking you're in tackle <laughs> through. You get, like, a million pieces. Uh, it's always radical. Uh, uh, then you got a big rocket launch on your back that you're never going to use. Oh, yeah, we get heaven, we he heaven weapon, heavy weaponry. And, um, I basically never touch the heavy weapons, almost ever. You should never pick up ammo for it, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Ammo for it is so rare that I, I think I use it in this first mission against that big enemy. And then I didn't get another piece of heavy ammo till like, the fourth mission. <laughs> it's, it's, it's too powerful to give you any more, so, like, so I'm never going to use it then. So here it is, like, oh, this guy's just, like, gone into panic overload of, like, there are monsters coming. Hide, hide, hide. Are you good? We come all this way and our only witness is a babbling idiot. You good, buddy? Doesn't seem like awesome. they are okay. Oh, let's Storm do it. Swarm. Yeah. Yeah, Did renegade moment. And that's another one of those new additions is renegade and um Not one of them. renegade and paragon yeah, actions can appear like yeah. mid conversations where you can like yeah. disrupt the conversation rather than let him ramble. We just shoot them on her and be like they took everyone. Get out of it. Tell us what Why fucking happened, man. Back, what Shout out to Miranda as well for wearing her high tech battle gear. You didn't see, <laughs> but I see everything. I really appreciate that everyone's wearing high tech battle Looks gear. Looks like security footage. He must have pieced it together manually. What the hell is that? That. Look at that tactical cleavage. Oh my god. I think it's a collector. I appreciate it as well, What's even in like the remaster, it's still. Like, shit. blurry enough shitty footage. It's like, yeah, it should be. Because, like, they're trying to keep them, like, you know, an elusive secret at the moment. Is that some kind of alien? They're a species from somewhere beyond the Omega-4 relay. Only a few people have ever seen one in person. They usually work through intermediaries, like slavers or hired mercenaries. If they're involved with the Reapers somehow, it could explain what happened to the colonies. The collectors have advanced technology. They could have a weapon that disables an entire settlement at once. Yep, that's pretty fucking terrifying. The seeker swarms. No one can hide. The seekers find they collect you, people. Free you. Like yeah. Luke's, they the kidnap take you without away. your knowledge and do weird experiments to them. Then Cerber Cerberus is saying that, keep in mind. <laughs> What happened next? It's a, Joe Lux, it's a bad thing to kidnap people and perform experiments on them against their cons without their consent. So Geth still exist in the universe. Um, I think that's probably all they are still a species that exists, but like they are not the primary force that you are like fighting through the entire game. Even though they're a super interesting enemy type. The Geth are super fun. More possibly one of my favorite fictional races. The monsters. Very interesting, and they are explored a lot more in Mass Effect 2, which is very cool. Lots of readings. Oh, God, so much. Like, one of my favourite cutscenes in all of gaming is in this game. Is it this one? With the, why do I do I have a song? Or is yeah, that Mass I, believe that's, I believe that's this game. One of the single greatest cutscenes. Like, one of the best moments of storytelling in a video game. Just, do I have a song? need to see if he knows anything else. He'll be returned unharmed. It's straight out of, like, Asimov. If oh yeah, you, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really good mission. Was an and I think and it's Mass Effect too. Now that's the thing is like, Just let me you know, obviously I do think the, the crew and the writing is stronger in Mass Effect 2, but it's like not all of like the really cool stuff is in 2, a lot of it is in 3 as well and the fact that I'm questioning like yeah. what is in 2 and 3, like a lot of How it blends together in the sense that like yeah, Mass Effect 3 has a lot of really cool writing as well, and a lot of cool missions. Yeah. Because for me, they kind of like occupy the same space. I generally played them back to back. You don't have to take Vitor and go. We could work together just like old times. I'm still trying to accept that you're even alive. You tell him, Tally. With Cerberus. I've got responsibility. I am, I'm not with Cerberus. A mission of my own. We are technically like, we are with members of Cerberus. But like we're, not, the option we're not a member yeah. of Cerberus, yeah. 
It's like we are completing a mission for Cerberus right now. Look. Um, you know what, Tally? I'm sorry, I respect you, but Vita's coming with us. The people at Cerberus yeah, the renegade the option is to take them with you. Mm -hmm. we need that but the, the funny bit is as well, you can always tell what the renegade option is, it's the one at the bottom. Yeah, that's the weird thing, is like, they always keep it. So the bottom options are the evil, like, middle is neutral, um, no. renegade is uh, paragon to stop. We need a so like, a it standing by. means that all you have to do when you're on your dialogue wheel is just like, hold bottom right. And you'll get Renegade or whole top right and you'll get Paragon. You don't even need like nuance in decision making on the dialogue wheel. Oh. And It'd I'll be cool if they were all like again. if there was a mode to just randomize it all. So you actually had to pay attention be, to what it all said. And that should be a fun mod. Mm -hmm. Randomize the dialogue so you can't just spam renegade options all the way through. Mm -hmm. But you have to choose because that thing as well. It, it really stops you from picking the option that you want to do when you know that picking the top option gives you more Paragon points. Yeah, exactly. That's why I think Baldur's Gate, again, does it really, really well of um, all of the members of your party have negative and positive things that they respond to, but they're all different. I was not a really... I didn't remember this because I've only done Male Shepherd once. Just having a longer hair and a beard due to like being under house arrest. It's like... That's a great way of getting around, like, Oh well, why does Shepard like currently have beard options in the third game now? It's like, well, he's not. He's, he's not, just come out of suspension. Military. Just it's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, because he's obviously he's not military, and if you're in the military, you got to have closely cropped hair. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Me and you always talk about, isn't it? We always pick female options in video games. They generally my have more initial, customization options. Yeah, my initial playthrough with Mass Effect when I was younger was uh, male Shepard, and from that point, I've never done it. So, but yeah, I, I often just go female characters because a, I like playing as like powerful badass females, and b, they generally have better customization. It also, it's a perspective that, as a guy, you don't often get. So it's fun to play from that perspective. Mm -hmm. Like my Baldur's Gate playthrough is always like, because the characters just look cooler. Yeah, uh, so that's a cool thing they do in that. Of you get different approval and disapproval things. And there's so many people online of like, well, I said this and I've pissed off Shadowheart. She won't sleep with me now. It's like, well, what did you say? Well, I answered this question and she didn't like it. And he goes, well, yeah, because she's a different, like, you know, she has a personality. It's like, mm -hmm. well, then Asteria liked it and she hated it. How do I make them both happy? It's like, you can't. People have different opinions based on what you do. Yeah, and there's a similar kind of thing in this where, like, if you don't have enough, um, like, points to convince somebody in, like, a Renegade or Paragon way, they're all, like, crew members that can fall out with each other or with you. That's so, it, yeah. There's oh, like there's missions where if you don't, if your crewmate doesn't trust you, they won't listen to you. They'll instead trust their own judgment rather than yours, and that can interact with the story in various ways. And that's another thing. I'd like uh, you need to play Baldur's Gate is so fun. Oh no, I plan on it. It's just again, I'm just waiting for like being able to sit down and play like you know co-op and cross-play. And I don't know like we don't know when the Xbox version's coming out anyway. They said this year. And then we don't know when mm -hmm. cross-play is getting added either. It's like, I'm hoping by, like, Christmas break, we'll be able to just, like, Jenna and I just, you know, go and smash through a load of that game while we that, take a couple of weeks a off. Christmas break game. Mm -hmm. It's a very cosy game. Yeah. Like, mate, there's a, a dialogue option I had today that put me on my fucking ass. <laughs> well, I'm talking to, like, this blacksmith, and there's, like, his assistant downstairs. Yeah. His assistant's just like, oh, have you met so-and-so at the, uh, the forge? He's the best in uh, Baldur's Gate, don't you know? And the top option is, like, quite a little ass licker, aren't you? <laughs> just, <laughs> just the fact that that's an option. And I went, I immediately Jesus. clicked it, and every member of my party approved of it. <laughs> the collectors are definitely quite the little ass licker, aren't you? I just, I just burst out laughing that it was an option. It really feels like the kind of thing you'd say in a D&D &D game, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. The abductions are related. That's like so many moments in it feel like, you know, just a, not the renegade option, but you just pick it to see what would happen in a um, uh, a D&D &D game. And it really, it can fuck you over so much. And take a note here of like, um... It's like, I won't wait until the Reapers are on the march. We need to take the fight to them after he's just been like, oh, look, the Council and the Alliance don't understand. We need to take action on our own. It's like, the renegade option is to agree with him. It's like, mm. it's, is it yes, we want to take the fight to the Reapers, but like, it presents siding with Cerberus and going against the Council and the Alliance as the bad option here. 
as the evil mode. And, and here's the thing. Because the evil option is always the one on the bottom, you can really see, like, the makers and the writers' politics in a way they probably didn't anticipate. Mm -hmm. Like, they probably didn't know or realize that that was the thing. Like, you can see the politics of what they think is right or wrong based on which option goes at the top, which one goes at the bottom. Also, obviously, like, it's quite obvious in that shot, take note of, like, the fact that the elusive man's eyes are clearly some kind of technology that it's not yeah he's got it's not clear like you know whether that means that he's an android or a cyborg or a robot is he just got eye implants like we don't know yeah um, that, there's some shit going on i'm still a specter maybe i can get the council to help us out if you think you could quite a little it's like just remember <laughs> you know, you are a spectre, but you're also a dead spectre. So, have yeah, fun talking to the council that... about that. The thing is, though, I guess, like, they never officially revoked your status. I guess not. That was two years ago, Commander. Most of them have moved on, or their allegiances have Or two of them are dead. Two out of six of them. Like, that's the thing is, we took on one Reaper, and a third of our party died. It's, like, oh, it's, it's actually so quite hard to go back and then try and convince your crew, like, maybe you should join back in with this. Like, we're, we're going to take on the entire army. It's like, Shepard, a third of us died trying to take out one. But that's one of my favourite things about it, where the council spends the entire game saying the Reapers aren't a problem. The Reapers and then the joke we make is, a Reaper turns up and it's not even started firing yet. Mm -hmm. It's just so massive that its appearance destroys half the Citadel. And the council is immediately on the mic of like help, help. He's <laughs> too beast. Um, yeah. So Garrus disappeared a few months after we were declared dead, and we haven't been able to locate him. Where's Liara Tassoni? Where's Liara Tassoni? She's, she's on Ilium. She's, on Ilium. she's working for the shadow. Working for the shadow working broker. For the shadow so broker there it is. They can't be trusted, Lucas. They engage in like shady espionage like <laughs> activities. We can't be trusted. So that's the saves me, Cerberus man. Yeah, we've just kidnapped a dude for information. I need more intel before I'll commit to that. But yeah, Tally. Well, we know where Tally is now. Let's find out where he is, so we can not go there. Promoted, I believe. His file is surprisingly well classified. Okay, I get it. They're not available. So that's one of the things I love about like Mass Effect, like when the pro. Um, the Reapers turn up, the and you're just like, God, the, like, the Reapers aren't that powerful, like, not, like, you know, the Alliance has the strongest military in all of space, <laughs> or what the, fuck the Reaper's gonna do, one turns up, and just every other council immediately puts out. Like, we have to go on, like, a, like, the entire fleet of multiple different, um, uh, races basically have to go on, like, a suicide run against one Reaper. Yeah, the the collective might of like every sentient race in the Sounds galaxy good. on the Citadel would take out I've one a little pilot, bit, and there's like might. fifty billion of them. One of the best. Oh, we're gonna get more in. No pilot we can trust. Like, look, Joker can walk. It's just obviously hey, he's walks like he shits himself. Yeah, he just struggles with it, and especially when like the spa the space. spaceship that we're on is okay. getting exploded. It's like, yeah, he's already had a bit of a rough time. It all fell apart without you, Commander. Hey, see me, look, he's like he's walking a bit funny. Like, he yes. struggles walking upstairs. You know, I appreciate that detail. But it still doesn't make sense that the future where they can rebuild you, they don't rebuild his legs. <laughs> it's like, maybe that's what it was. Maybe he never used to be able to walk and Cerberus gave him, like, a little bit of an upgrade. Saved your life. Let me fly. And there's this. I like as well how, like, Joker's just like... Oh, with Commander Shepard, he immediately sides with Cerberus because he trusts you. Yes, yeah. He's like, I don't give, like, about Cer don't give a shit about Cerberus, but I do give a shit about rejoining you, and however I can do that, I'll do that. Yeah, he's like, do you care about working with Cerberus? No, but they told me it'll help you, and I trust you. Mm -hmm. and I think that's how you basically get most of your party, isn't it, from the previous game? You're like, They don't like Cerberus, but they like you, and they trust your judgment. Exactly, and because we don't trust Cerberus, they're like, okay, cool. But we have got Cerberus branding all over that shit. I guess we'll have to give her a name. Normandy is so fucking cool. Oh, yeah, it's such a cool looking ship. It's I love the really, fact that it's really like cool. a small, sleek ship rather than, like, you know, say, for example, like 
one of the first like famous ships I can think of in media is like the Enterprise. It's like that is a big like bulky looking thing, yeah. and it's a cool design, but it is like a big bulky looking ship. Whereas yeah, this looks like more like a is. ship that's like only built for a few people, but obviously scaled up a little bit. So I think the uh, the Enterprise is fun because the saucer section is where everyone lives, and the battle section can disconnect from below, which I think is really cool. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah well, I think I don't know too much about Star Trek itself, but obviously like. Just the design of the Enterprise is one of the most iconic, like spaceship-looking things in all of sci-fi. I always think it looks very futuristic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've never. And it, lo it looks like a spaceship. It doesn't look like any yeah. other type of vehicle. Like the Normandy looks a bit like a car that doesn't need wheels or something. Like a very slick, you know, small vehicle. But like the the Enterprise doesn't look like any kind of vehicle we have. Like. The Normandy could get away with being like this high tech plane. Yeah, I will say though that a friend of mine has like a Normandy um, uh, like figure, and it looks really good. Oh, the, yeah, like that's the, the Normandy design is incredible. I think it's just super like really? simple and sleek looking. Yeah. It was like a toy. I probably yeah. You cool jacket. Your, your entire crew should wear the same jacket. <laughs> I think I want that jacket. I want that hoodie. That's a really cool looking. Oh, is it a joke? Oh, sorry, it's like the screen's a bit dark on my. I didn't realize a hoodie. Yes, it is. It's like that. a little hoodie on that. That's swag as fuck. Uh, the details get a bit lost in the darkness on it, yeah. But I immediately go back and talk to Joker, by which I mean go back and talk to Edie. <laughs> Welcome aboard the new Normandy, Commander. No, Edie is there, yeah. It's the AI on the ship, isn't it? Because that's why, yeah. Uh... the dossiers. I'd strongly recommend starting by acquiring Morden Solus. Well, yeah, we're going to get more <laughs> we know the collectors use We've got to get one of the best characters in the game. And, mobilize their victims. and I love the fact that, like, him to develop a essentially, the, yeah, the first portion of the game is, like, get the squad, and then the second half is, like, get the squad to trust you, and then the third act is, like, the shit's getting real. It's a part of the game that was like I was kind of missing the first one, wasn't it? Of like you hang out with your squad and like you have every after every mission you talk to them, but mm. most of the game is just do mission. Whereas this one has missions that are specifically for no other purpose than make your squad like you mm -hmm. and make you like the squad. Without the professor, any encounter with the collectors would result in failure. Who are you? I am the Normandy's artificial. Yeah, user. there we go. I always trust Edie. AIs are dangerous, no, no call. Don't trust machine learning. Shut that thing down. The thing is, though, if they taught us and looked like Edie, I think we'd all be dead. Shepard spent a great deal of time <laughs> fighting rogue AI. Geff, mostly. Plus, so there's like a great, like, it's like um, Ex Machina deals with that, where it's just like uh, an AI that immediately goes rogue and kills everyone. It's like, well, how does it escape? It's like it looks like Alicia Vikander. Shit. Yeah, that's, that would work. <laughs> it is a good point here, though, of like. Yeah, it's not a rational fear of AI like most people have. It's like, we just spent, like, all that time fighting Reapers and Geth, both of which are, like, AI-based, inorganic, you know, um, races. And it's like, yeah, of course, Shepard of all people probably is like, get this fucking AI out of here. And the reason for distrusting it is very, like, founded, because an AI will naturally have different interpretations of what is the correct course of action in any given scenario, because an AI is not, for example, programmed to value human life. Come find us if you have any questions. There we go. Like, that sums up Jacob right there. Like, you have an entire back and forth with Miranda, and Jacob just salutes and I'm out. Yeah, if you want, if you want to talk to us, go back and talk to Edie. Um, I actually don't remember what Ashley's loyalty mission was because, again, like I played like the it. wrong way the first time. Of like, I saved Ashley. I was male shepherd. I was playing as like um, I think I didn't play as a soldier, but I played as like a vanguard and did a paragon run. So, like I played pretty safe the first time, and like I still don't remember what Ashley's like loyalty mission was. That's this is why you want to get Maud in as well. Get Maud in right away because he's your tech guy. Well, that's he why the game pushes you, you to get him right away, yeah. Are you not really so looking go... forward to getting Zaid? No. <laughs> but definitely go speak to Joker. 
Talk to Yeoman Chambers first. Do you like Yeoman Chambers? I'll manage your messages and help you. She's like your PA, right? I must say. Uh, similar to a PA, yeah, kind of thing. Like she's uh, got an official title, but she just she just handled your email. It hasn't stopped it. going live at all. Might have just been a hiccup. Yeah. But, but she says she got a fancy title, but she just answers your emails for you. Mm -hmm. I don't need any assistance. It's like, no, let's be nice to the crew. That's all like Please call me, Kelly. <laughs> Please call me Kelly. No. Let's keep this professional, yeoman. Yes, ma'am. Anything else? Can the I thing is, well, that's now a, that's locked in for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah, and I. That, but that's how well, I be... think. Oh, like Shepard would. It's like no, we're keeping like, this yeah, professional. I'll, I'll be polite, but keep it professional. Yeah, it's like you call me, you call me commander, I'll call you yeoman. And this is one of the best updates they added to two. Is like, how is the crew? And that's basically just saying, who has new dialogue choices for? Who has new conversations? Because yeah. there's like four there anybody... levels on the ship. And like twelve it crew members, it's like who can I go speak to? Right? It it can get, like, especially with like low times back in the three sixty era. Mm -hmm. And it's just as soon as you lo like load into the Normandy Mark II, you ask her, anyone needs to talk to me? No, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and yet, yeah, like the fact that there, she's just like, yeah, Joker wants to talk to you, and that's all it'll be is like well, you have messages that need being read, uh, being read. Also, like you know. Miranda and Jacob both itching to talk to you about something. It's a, it's a good way to stop you aimlessly wandering around the ship like we did in Mass Effect 1, where you'd like go all the way down to the bottom and it's like, Rex, got any updates from last mission? No. See you later, Shepard. Uh, oh, okay. Right. Like, it's all from Anderson. You put us on top. It's like, oh, the, like, but, the human beings are on top, Lucas. It's like, yep, yeah, I need you to come to the Citadel if you are alive. You put us on top, and it's only fair that you be allowed to speak for yourself about what we've been hearing. Who did he send that email to? Uh, uh, Is it your like, old email address? You know, commander.shepherd.com. Like, uh, that still like exists as an email address, right? I guess so. Like if I if I heard that you died, I could still in two years email like the fat fiend at gmail dot com or whatever it is and be like, Hey Carl, I've heard mm. a rumor that you're alive. Is it true? Please respond. Uh yeah, it's like here's here's like the backstory of Zaid is like he was basically just like some I don't maybe you could check for us like how you got Zaid. I think he was like either DLC or pre order or something like that. Um, I'll double check. I don't remember him, so I imagine he was DLC. Yeah, I don't think he was like in the base game in some way. Like it was probably in that time where like you got a code if you bought the game new or something because it's an EA game. And it's like if you buy the game new, then you get Zaid for free. But if you don't get the game new, you get it pre-owned. You have to buy Zaid. You know probably as well. I like think that. it shows kind of as well um the era against like this must come out around the time mass effects like do you know what people want they want badass like mercenary guy with like the tribal tattoo and then they realize halfway through development of like oh no put the fucking weeb character in <laughs> like she's literally called kasumi with the red hair she looks like kasumi from dead or alive i don't think she's got red hair does she is it isn't it? i think it might be like black with a hint of red or something like the classic so, uh, Zaid is only available through the Zaid, the Price of Revenge DLC pack. Hmm. So, this is just, like, here we got one, like, canonical message, and here's all, like, here's all the DLC um, emails that you got, like, confirming that you bought, like, all the DLC stuff. Um, um, Zaid is one of only two squad mates whose loyalty mission is available immediately after being recruited. Yeah. And I presume the other one is Kasumi. He also does not have any um, dialogue options when the player talks to him. Yeah, yeah. He just, like, you walk into his room and he's like, Shepard. But... Well, he does know that he will have unique dialogue during missions, which is the thing everyone always wants anyway, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's one of the fun things about replaying the Mass Effect games, of, like, going and doing a different mission with, like, a different crew set of crewmates to see what their opinion on the matter is. Mm-hmm. Also, I like that's this. why there's like a, um, a message from like the bank, and it's like, 
Thank you for submitting your updated medical documentation. Your status has been changed from deceased to alive. After deducting modest administration fees for closing the file, the subsequent change in status and the reactivation of your account, you have a remaining balance of 100,000 credits. Thank you for backing with Ascension Financial Services. Like, we we might have had like a million credits. Yeah, we, we might, might have been have like, like a millionaire. Million and it's like... It do, yeah... Uh, are you protecting your greatest assets? We'll find the way to. We'll, we'll find the best life insurance rates and coverage to fit your needs. Reply for a free quote today. I'd I'd email back and be like, "What about the life insurance that was on me? Like, what happened to that? Because I'd like that, please. <laughs> I, I did the die. Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna the email back happens, like we think that the the like Shepherd's actually been a life insurance scam the entire time. Yeah, but that's the thing that happens all the time as well, and it's really scary. And you might think proving that you're not dead would be really easy because you're not dead. <laughs> it's really fucking difficult. Because, like, someone could just be stealing your identity, right? Yeah, you it's like proving you're not dead is really difficult because the instant you declare dead, every piece of official government ID starts working. So walking into, right. like, say, a government office with a passport doesn't work, even though the passport shows who you are, because that passport's technically not working anymore. Mm -hmm. So even though it's a picture of you on your passport and you're clearly still alive, it doesn't prove who you are. Um, uh, <laughs> for bureaucratic reasons, it's the passport of a dead person. And there are people who've spent literally decades trying to prove that they're alive. No, also, yeah, just just make note here that, like, Joker refers to ED, the AI, as it's like ship cancer. Enjoy it, just gonna just gonna pull that out there. Well that's well, that's Joker's like initial uh, impressions. Regs if I get that on a cruise shirt, because this is my favorite. You have no choice, choice ever. It's, it's because as well, like, he likes being in charge, mm -hmm. and the AI was installed because they say the AI is super fast and it can help you make decisions. And Joker doesn't like that because it's like, well, you're taking the human element out of decision making. Mm -hmm. An AI can't possibly make the life or death decisions a human would have to. Wonder how that you can talk to Edie if you want. She's like the little circle. Yeah, yeah, and also like another person that I think like someone who's mostly known for not voice acting that I think did a good job in this. Seth Green. Like I don't generally like Seth Green, but like I think he does a good job as Joker. I mostly like him because I like his interaction with Edie. Mm -hmm. Yes, Shepard. What's this area of the ship? This is the bridge where the navigator plots our FTL yeah. vectors and the helmsman maneuvers the ship. Yeah, sitting right here, thanks. Now, I wonder what Edie has to say I about Cerberus. I don't know more about the people I'm working with. Much of that data is classified. Oh, no! Do you have a specific inquiry? He's like, you, you've locked out most of that information, Shepard. What, well, the building of the Normandy? Cerberus How'd they build this thing? Aside from the we'll check that in a sec. I don't see much change in command. Yeah. Cerberus is organized oh. into task-oriented cells. Each operates in isolation. Members from one cell can of another. recognize the members of another. Each cell also, just I like Edie's voice. It's a very, it's a very good. Cool, I can't hear it, but from what I remember, she's got a very cool, like, just very um, uh, calm, like lady voice. Mm -hmm. Yes. How did Cerberus the replicate the most advanced warship in the Alliance Navy without anyone knowing? I have a block that prevents. Oh. Answering that question. How did you build mm. this Normandy? Um, I can't tell you that, Shepard. It's like, I'm the captain of this ship. Tell mean? me. Although I am less it's one of those cool things, like the AI is that I can't tell you. I am still subject to behavioral blocks and the physical isolation of my hardware. In this case, I am prevented from truthfully answering hmm. the question by Cerberus' like, levels of secret classification. Despite them being like, oh, um, you know, trust us. They've immediately programmed the ship's AI it's to be like, now. don't tell Shepard anything. Right, she doesn't have clearance. That's a great little bit of world building. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I like about Edie is that as you go through the game, the AI starts to like you and it starts to tell jokes. <laughs> and I, you know, the, it's never stated outright, but the, I always read it as because Joker just spends all his time talking to himself and Edie responds to him. If right, you like sit yeah. around, if you, if you stand near them, you'll hear Joker like just talk out loud. Most people do. Mm -hmm. And Edie will respond thinking she's talking to him. Or she's thinking he's talking to her. And she'll, she'll respond and he'll get annoyed. But as you go through the game, they start bickering like an old couple. Yes, yeah. 
I think that's like one of the things of how she develops her personality. And one of my favourite lines she has is, um, uh, no! so Edie, like, what are you? Like, are you <laughs> this circle I'm looking at? And she, well, no, uh, my housing unit is stored in this part of the ship, but technically, I am the entire ship. All it's fun that you're time inside was me. So much better, wouldn't it? I don't know those elevator talks anymore. Oh yeah. no! No, I can't look at it. We've it's currently got no fish. Big... We've got no well, fish. That's the thing. The that's moment. what we feel like. They have no fish anyway. So they always die. Oh look at that! Our little achievement. And also, yeah, uh, you got that little picture of Liara right there. Is that your romance in the last game? No, it's a wee romance. Yeah. You romance tally it in the embarrassing like uh, Photoshop picture of well, a hot lady. We couldn't romance her in the first game, right? Yeah, it's the third game. Sorry, where you do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the, the get some music. Well, you can play some music, yeah. And then what Edie will do is um, she'll say, "Yes, you're inside of me, tickling me with your feet." That was a joke. And I fucking love it. I love um, the idea of an AI telling you it's a joke. Not only can you feed the fish. Um, like you, you like obviously when you click feed the fish, you're not allowed to spam it. But like you can come up whenever you want and feed your fish. But if you don't feed your fish, they will die. They'll die. Yeah. So when like you, nearly like, everyone ends the game with like just a bunch of dead fish. And it's like, no, just there was the, think, the yeah, galaxy was a danger. Like I needed. To... I'm sorry, yeah, fish. You have to go. I think you go through your ship one last time and talk to your crew, don't you, before the game ends? Because mm -hmm. everyone's fish are dead. That'd be a good chat point here. Yeah, feed the fish. Check if your fish are okay. That's true. Yeah. Or do you buy some fish? Make it a thing of like check, like, check if the fish are okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going there out of habit. Like, there's no one down there yet. Nothing to do down there. Ooh, is she here, though? You got the medical bay? Let's see if my favourite character's here. Oh, oh yeah, Dr. Chuckles. I have so many favourite characters in this game. Dr. Chakwas. Dr. Chakwas is really fun. She's got a really good backstory. And she's in all three games, right? I think if you play your cards right, she can be, yeah. Yeah, she's like one of those characters. She's like Joker, where because she's in all three games, like you really get to know her. And I always liked the backstory of like, uh, why are you here? I thought like you hated service. Like, yeah, it sounded fun. There we go, Dr. Chakwas. Yeah. Who I think I looks notably younger in this game. Cerberus, give us some space, Botox. <laughs> That's that I don't like. That's it's, it's obvious that they made her look standard. younger because they made her look I a bit hotter. Same. But I like what she's like, you know, just older, stern lady. Yeah, now she kind of just looks like every other would character. Would most yeah, like she was but one of the few you, characters who had like it was distinctly older than you. At least female characters like Udina and Anderson are older than you, but. And the way she talks, well, she's voiced, like, I'm not need. sure if the actress who voiced her is older, so. but she voiced it as if this she was older. Seems very much like the sick like she had a bit of, like, that, that dryness to her voice. A bit hoarse. I, I, even had a I love of this as well. That I was like, for yeah, a Normandy have given me, uh, Cerberus have given me everything I could want, apart from a real nice bottle of brandy if you happen to uh, be on the lookout for it. Keep an eye but that's the thing, that's your loyalty bottle. mission for Chakwas. Oh, yeah. If you don't do that, she doesn't appear in my It's expensive. Room. And we have much larger concerns ahead. But you just find out, she's like, yeah. Because if you talk to her in the first game, she talks about how she wanted to go on an adventure. Mm -hmm. That's why she became type, a soldier. That's why she became a, a medic on a ship, because she wanted to see the universe. But also, she just wanted to bang a bunch of hot soldiers, didn't she? Like, I, I love her backstory. She's like, I, what, I wanted to bang a bunch of dudes. She's like, I wanted to, to see the, like, you, you know, the galaxy. And also, there's like no better place to find a bunch of like hot young men. It's like, fair enough. The fact that you can't romance her as a male shepherd is a crime. Like, she should 100, or at the very least, she should be a flirt option. Hmm. There's a very good chance. You know, like, um, like, is it Samara that you can flirt with and she just breaks your dick off? I've been through the reclaimed no, or the matriarch. The That's like we never a daughter or something. And the destruction yeah, there's of the like there's that Asari who's like I've super powerful biotic. If you, you can choose, she's a succubus. Then, and if you have sex, sure like yeah, there is the, you know spoilers for a, a bit of like a side point in the game. It's like there is a succubus that the game like tells you about and is part of a mission. And it's like it's implied like you know don't do this and. Well, I think it's explicitly said that like, people who sleep with her die. 
I and then there is the literally an option yeah. in the game to get a game over by sleeping with her. And the game even tells you if you pick this, you will die. And yeah. if you select it, you get like you get Commander Shepard's O face, and then just a game over screen. <laughs> it's like, you get the same yeah. thing for I wanted with to Jack West. It's like it, it, yeah. it is the true, just like no, it, it's it, the Shepard move. It's the we will bang, but it, will it be worth it? Because like, I've clicked the option see, before, and it is just like Come you on. go and bang and it die. Kills, yeah. You should be able to do it with Chakwas, but it's like you don't die, you should lose like three levels. <laughs> it's just, it's like it honestly one of the like the best moments because you think, like, well, they're not going to let you so do it because you're going to die. And it's like, no, they're, they're, they're going to let you. Like, your decision, you a bad idea as well. <laughs> your decision matters, and everyone's telling you, like, multiple people have been dying because of this woman. You will die. This is not a good yeah, plan. No, I'm like, Commander yep. Shepard, I'll tell my life. But she's real hot, though. I'll walk it off. Service will bring me back, right? Can you imagine that meeting? Should we bring him back? It's like, not again. Terminal. Receive new message. There are no new messages. That would be a fun thing as well. A fun thing would be that you can have, like, there's, like, make it so there's five decisions like that in the game. If you can make one and Cerberus will bring you back, but if you make another one, Cerberus, <laughs> like, we're not doing it. I'd That'd like, be really fun. Like, if, you do, if you do it once, the service will bring you back and get, okay, that was stupid, but we understand. The third time you do it, they should be like, no, fuck it. They're too stupid. We're going to get someone else. It's too expensive. Fuck you, this. Oh, I oh, forgot that you fly around, you little shit. Yeah. You fly around and you can run out of fuel. So I guess like a good place to just begin the game is like just do the little... Look at the size of that the little DLC of like exploring the Normandy crash site and it's just like it, there's not too much to it but it's just like you know you you just go and like see the Normandy one last time pay some respects I have detected but you get like a bunch of stuff as well oh here's the scanner I like this system I don't mind it I don't mind it's like it little, it's a fun little mini game yeah because, like, you can see here, like, oh, it's rich in resources, and then you, like, each, your controller starts vibrating, and it, like, comes up with little spikes of which of the four elements you're going to get. That's what they took, they took advantage of the haptic feedback present in the controller. And, like, I always just like doing this, of, like, a quick, like, just go up and down as you like, quickly spin it, and just, like, the moment it stops being, like, good resources, you just give up. Yeah. Probe. It's like you can sit here for a long time and like really be like anal about it and get every resource, but it's like it's not that hard if you just give the, the planet a quick spin. And then you just like feel for moments where the controller's like <laughs> oh, this planet's like fucking Yeah, we've got, got, got a full resource. Yeah, there we go. This the moment like it goes like to moderate, I'm like, alright, I'm done. That's a DLC planet, all right. Nice. That feels way more stacked with resources than other planets. The fact that, yeah, we got 2,500 um, of each element for, like, the import bonus, and then that gave us, like, 7,000 of one element and a bit of the others. It's like, okay. What you should do is you should drag this behind your ship. <laughs> With this DLC, then, it's DLC to go visit the crash site. I believe so, yeah, because it came up as like so a bunch of those like emails that were like, the hey, DLC you've got emails. a new recon hood, you've got the arc projector, you've got like Omega, uh, not Omega, you've got like um, the Shadow Broker and stuff like that, like those kind of missions and like the Kasumi mission and the Zaid mission. That's really weird. Do you think this would be one of those things where like they make it the first mission? Mm, yeah. And that's why I thought, yeah, you I know, probably a good place to just establish like the start of the game is just, yeah. Go and Go collect some dog it. tags. Oh, no. Get a little bit of experience and just, like, see where, like, you know, the crash site. It's pretty cool. It, it shows you, because you never really see the scale of the Normandy, because it always looks really small in cutscenes, but obviously there's, like, 50 people live on it. Mm -hmm. It's yeah, like, it looks this. really small in, like, cutscenes and stuff. You just... But when you think about it, it's, like, it's basically a, the size of a 747. If not bigger. 
quite yeah. a bit bigger actually because like you think about it you got like entire living quarters in there and stuff yeah maybe a submarine then maybe yeah yeah do a loop loop go find your old bedroom <laughs> just that's the thing in the first game like you never really got like cabin quarter like captain quarters i don't think i, don't I think, think they you were did they the first one I think you did have a bedroom, so obviously that's where you have your romance option. Oh, no, yeah, they yeah, say yeah, that you're, of course, yeah. They say, because you're the captain, you get a bigger bedroom. Everyone else sleeps in bunks, but you're the captain, so you get a special bedroom. I mean, probably fair enough. Also, didn't they say um, everyone survived but one person? And then you collect 20 dog tags at the crash site. It's like, they said, and like, Presley and one other person died, which means immediately, yeah. like, we're being lied to. By the AI. Oh, or, wait, no. Cerberus. I was going to say, was it, it was the elusive man that told us that, yeah. Yeah, maybe the elusive man died. Oh, the elusive man lied about how many people died. <laughs> the elusive man may have died and lied. We don't know. Like, that's the thing is, the elusive man is elusive. And that the that's fact that you see that he's got, like, the weird tech eyes is like, maybe the elusive man died a long time ago and this is, like, some weird robot version of this elusive man. We don't know. So you know what? You turn me around, Alex. I was thinking then that's like a, a plot hole and so you said, well, the elusive man's the one who told you. It's like, we could fucking lie anyway, couldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> like, you can't trust a word that comes out of a man's mouth if he's called the elusive man. He could be called, like, Big Liar and people are still like, well, what's he got? <laughs> it's like, it that's is that. Martin <laughs> Sheen. He's pretty convincing. So that's the shit post, isn't it? You could have a movie called like um, Oh Toxic no, the remains of where Ashley <laughs> stood. It's like burn them down. Burn them. <laughs> Sorry, what we said. Saying that's like that Tumblr shit post, isn't there? About like there could be a movie called Toxic Masculinity is bad, where the main character just alienates everyone who cares about them, and you still have guys online who be like, he's so cool though. Yeah, it's called Fight Club. Yeah. I did like that interview with the guy who wrote Fight Club, though. Or oh, directed it, sorry. How do you feel about like Weird Man Online turning your movie into, like, um, like saying your movie's really great and based on the personality? And it's like, it's not my... I don't... It's not my problem that they don't understand my movie. Mm -hmm. It's like, And I think he says, like, I made it really obvious that, like, you know, he's the bad guy and it's not a thing people should strive towards. How I don't think I could have made it more obvious and it's not my problem if people don't think it is. I, I, I had that I mean, conversation with like a little back and forth with someone on Twitter being like, they they were asking like, well, why is it like a red flag to enjoy Fight Club? Like, and eventually it got to the point where like clearly they understood like it was a breakdown of toxic masculinity and they you know, I called it like a red flag to like it. And it's like no, they like it for like the correct quote unquote reasons, whereas like or the, well, the intended reasons I should say. Whereas, like, yeah, a it's bunch a well of people movie like movie it movie. because they aspire to be Tyler Durden. Because Brad Pitt's a very charming man. It's like Lucas, though, but he blows up all the banks and gets rid of all the debt. That's a good thing, right? Ignore that he committed, like, terrorism. Mm hmm But the terrorism works. It's like, maybe I agree with, like, the idea of, you know, taking down banks. But uh, no! The Mako. The Mako. <laughs> it's like, never again. That thing still survived. That thing took out a fucking thrasher mall. That thing didn't touch the ball. The thing is, it's like it's intact. You could just pick that thing up and take it with you. Like, you could have gotten into that. Mm -hmm. I don't like as well this DLC mission is just using screenshots from the first game. Like not even yeah, like that's little thing, cut scenes it, of like, it's one of those like few DLC packs that came with like the mini little like season I pass forget, type yeah. thing that was I like forget, here yeah. you go do like the two like vehicle walk like the fire walker missions and like the, I forgot, the... yeah this was the era of the cell dlc that was 20 minutes long yeah and like, like this was really like, the... low effort like there's no dialogue or there's a couple of like text logs to this and that's it and then yeah, a few screenshots you often hear that like criticism like oh it's a they cut out a piece of the game to sell it back to you that's literally what this is mm-hmm this is literally a mission that was in the game, and they just piecemeal out, sell it to you for a quid. Yep. Got our lost N7 helmet. So we did find a piece of us, technically. Yeah, it should be in there. 
<laughs> just our original head. What's the did you fucking help? Because that's the thing, this is dire. I didn't realise them. it was walk around in a circle and look at This is why JPEGs. I was just like, maybe let's get this mission out of the way. Like, let's pay all respects like, and move the fuck on from this bad DLC. We will talk about, like, you know, Modern Warfare 3 being glorified DLC. At least you can play that. I have heard that's bad, though. It's bad, yeah. It's like, just campaign wise. Told it, if they'd just sold it for 30 quid and just say it's a map pack with new guns, people would have been fine. Because you know what? Call a map pack. Yeah. Reportedly, just... it was not. There was going to be like a year where they released DLC for Modern Warfare 2 and skipped making a brand new game. And then, like, Activision Blizzard went, went yeah, yeah, but if we make a quote unquote campaign out of like the multiplayer maps and sell it to people for 70 quid, then we get more. Like they, they could have sold it for, they could have even sold it for fifty quid if they said it comes to a new Warzone map because yeah. people play Warzone every night. Now that thing is like, they could have... you know, now what they've done instead of being like, oh, it's a respectable like you know DLC with all the cool like old Modern Warfare yeah, Two it's maps. Nice DLC, yeah. It's like now they're in a situation where they've got a Call of Duty game getting like reviewed four out of ten and tarnishing the brand. Yeah, instead of just having a DLC that people say, which is a bit overpriced, but if you like Call of Duty, you're going to get another 200 hours of gameplay out of it. Mm -hmm. It's that thing, isn't it? It's like, you know, Destiny DLC. Like, as an outsider, I'll probably look at it and say, that's not a lot of, like, bang for your buck. But if someone plays the multiplayer, you're probably like, well, 100 new guns and a bunch of new armor is going to keep you playing for, like, another 100 hours. Yeah, like, uh, you know, so, so someone being like, oh, well, 10 quid for... Like the dungeon is like a lot of money for like that one two hour experience it's like yeah but i'm gonna go run that and try and like find ways to solo it and get all like the extra bits out of it and try and you know get all like rerun it so i can get better weapon rolls on it and things it's like yeah. to me that might be instead of a two three hour experience it might be like 50 hours of gameplay because it adds like it adds more content to the multiplayer element. It's like same thing with Call of Duty. If they just added the DLC pack with like twelve new maps and fifty new guns, they'd be fine. And yeah, that's that's the pay respects to the Normandy mission. It's like Jesus Christ. They could that could have been a slideshow. Yeah. You could have just had like Commander Shepard go to their personal terminal and look at the pictures they took on their phone. And I guess we can like dock into Omega, but we're getting on a bit, so I'll like. Guess yeah. we can just like close out for now, start Omega for next time because that's where the game wants you to. I'll go to one of the other planets then. No. Uh, we'll go to one like by Omega. Yeah. Because like you can see yeah. there, it's like on Omega, it's like recruit both Archangel and the Professor and then the DLC characters I eat as well. Yeah. Go to a random planet though and like get some more resources. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's so cool. Like flying a little ship around. And like every single all. planet has like the little codex entry, the little orbital distance, period, radius, day length, and every single one you can just like do a bit of a scan on. And I believe, if I can remember correctly, like element zero is like the one that's a ball laid. So we did get 500 extra element zero from that mission, which is quite handy. Oh, we need the to one go buy more probes. Up, I'll go to that little ship. There you go. Oh. The fuel depot. And you can buy like just buy as many as you can. Just never not buy as many probes as you can. Like, I forgot you have to buy probes. the probes because the credits are way less valuable than the resources are. So yeah, always just own, like just make sure you always have maximum number of probes. Yeah. Launching probe. We want to always be able to probe. Never stop probing, Carl. It's so good. It's like they think it's a neat little system. I don't, I don't think it's too bad. I think it gets a lot of hate, and I think it, like a lot of players that are, you know, trying to like be completionist about it will scan every planet really slowly and do every single planet in the game. And it's like that wasn't the intention. The intention yeah, was to scan a few planets along the way to the next mission. Yeah, so you look at the planet, it says it's got moderate to good resources. If it's moderate, okay, find the three big lumps on it. Get mm -hmm. those and fuck off to the next planet. Yeah. 
They even stop you from doing it because there's a limit to how much of each like thing you can carry. Right, Once you get to yeah. like thirty thousand of like each element, there's no reason to keep collecting more mm -hmm. until you buy upgrades. Yeah. yeah pew, pew. I also just I love the fact that like we're playing the legendary edition, if nothing else, for the fact that the the loading screens aren't forty five seconds long. How many characters you can have? Yeah. Fucking hell, I've not seen this screen with like the like DLC the DL. there. So one, two, three, four, right out. five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, a dozen characters and you can off the bat get go and get like six new recruits. And three of them are here. Oh, hang on. Oh yeah, we have the, the stupid DLC like high tech armor. Oh that makes at least Ashley's wearing armor now. Yeah. No, look, apart from like the questionable visor that doesn't no, look sorry. great it's like she does at least look like she's combat ready now there we go we all not the AI hacking that's what we want yeah the visor got the dumb space visor like, I like visors for the most part but that one doesn't look great it should be a scouter I mean, if your brain likes the probing minigame and finding the biggest spikes, like, that's fine. But it's the people I liked that, it, I think. like, sat there and complained that, like, the, the, like, probing game was too much and boring. And it's like, you're probably, those are probably characters that didn't enjoy <sighs> it, but still felt the need to, like, probe every planet that. until you have nothing too. left. It's the same oh. energy oh, as people uh, who complain just... about Final Fantasy VIII and, uh, no. Oh, of course, like, Michael. junction in, like, you have to, like, draw a hundred of every spell. It's like, the game never what tells you to draw a hundred. Yeah. Welcome to Omega, Shepard. You know who I am? Of course. You know who I we am. We had you tagged the moment you entered the Terminus systems. I thought Cerberus was, like, super high-tech and cool. Aria and, like, they just know you are. Like, you're flying around the ship says, I'm Omega. Commander Shepard. <laughs> that is a Shepard move, though, isn't it? Of, like, Shepard would... Like, just walk around and fly around in, like, you know, N7 clothing with a big ship that's like, fuck you, I'm Shepard. I'll talk to your boss. What are you gonna do about well. it? Yeah. Then you'd better. Like, Shepard wants you to Come know that she's coming. Sorry, I'm waiting. Afterlife now. Like, that's the thing. Immediately. Right. Walking onto a ship and you're so famous that, like, there's already someone waiting there going, like, you need to go talk to the person who runs the place now. Regarding plans to deal with the Archangel. And Carl. There's a recruiting station at Afterlife that may have yes. information. This, on. this might be like my favorite recruitment mission. Oh, is so he just, you talk to him and he disappears? So it's like, it's just like here. Second one as you walk in. Please. You have to. They didn't even try, did they? <laughs> oh, no, talk, jackass. You Zaid Masani? Yeah, oh, they thought he was so badass. They thought he was the most badass design. They thought he was so cool. And you look at him and you think, you're not Garrus. Yeah, and it's literally like, you know, I'm... Uh, just report to the Normandy. Yeah, just report to the... Hi, you Zaid. Go yeah, go ahead and get on the ship. Right, I'll go make... And that's it! Bye. I assume the elusive man told you about our arrangement. <laughs> He's a twat. I'm assuming there's some part of your contract that I'm expected to handle. That about right? He's like the yeah. only one that's actively just not likable at all. A a He's like, well, he is unlikable as a character. The thing is, well, like, the archetype of, like, he's a, he's a mercenary hitman who kills people. Like, that's Thane. Thane has that backstory. He's like a hitman, right? Yeah, he's, a, he's an assassin. And he's using their workers for slave labor. The company wants it dealt with. I like that the company wants to tell with like this was my agreement from the elusive man like I agreed to come and help on like the um the you know with the kind of expectation that you'll help me with this mission and Shepard's like if there's time we get to it if we can our mission takes priority I know you've got bigger fish to fry that's why I'd like to get this other thing dealt with as soon as possible you can go do this side mission immediately yeah yeah you can it's like, oh look, like what a badass, you, this thing you know, takes names. You're shot an unarmed guy in the back, what a hero. Mm -hmm. A fucking badass. 
And my favourite bit is as well, you look at him and think Jack would tear him apart. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like Jack would fucking rip him apart. Um... That's the thing, he's not even like... He's not even got a unique place in the story. It's like, you've already got the Hitman. Yeah. In well, fame. we don't have the Hitman, but there is a Hitman in the squad. You will have him, yeah. And like, oh, he's the grizzled badass who takes no names. Well, that's you. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he's got like tattoos and scars. You've got Jack. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but he's really good at shooting things. You've got Garrus. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he's like, you know, he's really no nonsense and straight talking. You've got a Krogan. Yeah, yeah. He, he serves no purpose. He's just an amalgamation of, like, the worst part of all the characters. And he's just not very interesting like... or likeable or anything. And the thing is, they could have fixed it and just made him a woman. Because at least then, he'd have been, like, you know, not a stock archetype. Hmm, yeah. A bit different from, like, the, the trope. He's just, like, he's just Marcus Phoenix. Like, that thing. You can look at the design and think that's just so, like... It's so 2010 but, like, Xbox. We've got Marcus Phoenix at home. Yeah. I was thinking, he, just, he just looks like a 2010s Xbox character. Yeah, that's true. Garrus is also like a scarred badass that doesn't take shit. True. Yeah. But he's got the backstory of being a police. And because he's an alien, you have like the context of his alien race interacting with his. Um, uh... well, oh, I didn't know there was a photo mode in this. Yeah. A Krogan in battle like a badass. Oh, oh no. Luke, would you like to hear some something fun? Go on. You know that, that that Garfield movie, like the trailer just dropped. Oh right, okay. And um Chris Pratt does not change his voice at all. <laughs> of course not. He's not changing his voice get, at I all. I wanna get all up in this old coat. Yeah. If you have a look deep into an alcohol's eye Carl. Now you have. All right. Anyway, um, yeah, we wonder what Elcars look like from. The thing is, though, no, get the out the ang the Miranda angle on the Elcar. <laughs> go re show so show us what the Miranda angle looks like on Miranda. Oh god, and go man. look at the Elcar uh... from Miranda angle. I love photo mode. I love flying around the map and seeing all so the little details. The, you know, so you can... this angle is the Miranda angle. Yeah, there's like so many the... shots in the game where they've uh... from this. Not anymore that they removed. It's like Joss Whedon made this. Let's go. It's like, oh yeah, oh no, I can't get on the dumper. No, you can. You can walk back. Yeah, you walk back the camera. Let you move further back. Oh, they've censored the dumper, Carl. Oh, yeah. if you think this looks really stupid, why would you do this? Yeah, it looks just as stupid when they do it, Miranda. Yeah, like they do it in the game. The game did this, not yeah, with an alcohol, but with Miranda, they did. Well, that's always that joke, isn't it? Of like, uh, like the female armor thing. Of like, draw a male character wearing it. Does it look ridiculous? Yeah. Then you shouldn't put it in. Um, and yeah, just anyone you know that is here, uh, you can join the Discord for announcements of like when we're gonna go live with more Mass Effect. It'll be like you know same time every week on Mondays. Uh, Mass Effect oh, yeah. Mondays will continue, but tomorrow um, we're gonna start Tunic Tuesdays and we're gonna start a new Zelda game, and you can go vote. For your favourite Zelda game picks of what we've got to play. Currently, Skyward Sword is the uh, the game on track to win that vote. So is that yeah, only motion control. That is, but I'll be playing the Switch version where you can use the uh, right analog stick instead. Because I awesome. don't want to be going like this and just hitting the mic all the time, like which will happen. Um, but yeah, so want a, a say in that, go give it a vote if you want. Skyward Sword to be or not be the next game, let us know. But um, yeah, whatever happens to be leading, you know, by tomorrow when we get close to stream, I'll be setting that game up so we haven't got long left to decide for what we'll be uh, starting tomorrow in terms of Zelda games. I'm guessing the CDI games is never going to be on there. No, because they're not the Legend of Zelda games, Carl. Again, one day in the future when we've like finished them all, it might be like a stupid sub goal or something like that. But for the most part, right now, it's like the, I'm playing through the Legend of Zelda games and they are not them. Just, uh, all it'll be is just watch the cutscene, like the half an hour of YouTube video, the cutscenes on mm -hmm. YouTube, and that, you'll get it. And also, uh, because the six options I gave everyone the ability to vote twice, 
So if you've only used one vote, like go give a second vote. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining. It's been a pleasure, and I'm um, gonna like from the st just for like Mass Effect for the sake of it being like such a story game where like our choices matter and stuff. I am gonna try and just put these as like um, vods on my YouTube channel as well. But I'm not gonna be like making thumbnails and stuff for them. They're just gonna be very basic with like just yeah, just be like called Mass Effect number one or whatever. But just so that, like, if you miss a week, you're not going to miss out on a lot of, like, story and character development. But, yeah. Um, thank you all for joining. I hope everyone has a lovely day, evening, or night, wherever you are. Thank you, everyone. Just.